All right, and welcome back, everyone, to episode five of All That Glitters, which is our Star Wars Edge of the Empire campaign with um, our awesome GM, our fantastic players, uh, minus one tonight. But we're going to persevere regardless and have some good fun. And uh, I'll start with um, just a quick recap, and then we can do some player introductions after that. So uh, in the last session, we... Uh, we got off. We got off the planet where the Sector Ranger was harassing us, and we made our way to uh, Davish Four, I believe it was called Davish Three. Sorry, Davish Three. And this is the point where we're supposed to deliver the cargo of spice to a Toydarian who works for Maraga the Hut. And we did manage to meet the Toydarian, and we did pass off our cargo. We did get some form of payment for our services, and uh, we found out there was a hunt that was going to be happening. This is a planet that has uh, a lot of rich people or shady people that like to hunt Gundark once a year. And there's a contest and whoever gets the uh, most specialist Gundark gets the prize and they get some exclusive rights to hunt Gundark and possibly sell them because they go for a lot on the market which got our attention. So um, my good buddy uh, Dax here. He decided to uh, he decided to use Sector Merrick's credit card, <laughs> intergalactic credit card, to uh, enroll us to pay for the ten thousand credit fee to get our team in, and uh, we're going to try to bag us a Gundark one way or another. But uh, before that can happen, that's two days from now. So before that, we decided to go to the party that Maraga the Hut is hosting to meet all the hunters. And uh, it's on board a ship. We went there, and as we were getting on board the ship, we saw our good buddy Stim. He was dressed up as a waiter, and he just slipped into the into the crowd. And uh, so we we got on the ship. We went in there, and three of our party went to pursue Stim and ask him some very pointed questions with pointy objects. And Sekia had to uh, pay his respects to the mighty Moraga, which at first seemed to go well, but then ended up with him uh, inheriting a 100,000 credit personal obligation debt for quote-unquote sins of the past. But Sekia feels, you know, hey, come on, it was, it was a very confusing time, you know, Jabba got taken out by a slave girl, he got choked out, I mean, that's just embarrassing. And then, so, you know, I, I got a big shipload full of spice. What am I supposed to do with it, huh? But Moraga doesn't see it that way. So that's approximately where things left off. And Sekia was about to reveal some information to Moraga that Moraga might or might not be interested in or already know. So how about some player introductions? Let's start with uh, Dex. Hey guys, <clears throat> I'm Alan playing uh, Dex Marvin, uh, aka Zed Nidram, uh, just in case like people are looking for him. Um, but yeah, I'm, you know he's that badass space trader type dude that uh, is just out to make a buck with his filthy friends. Uh, as usual, I'm rocking the latte because I keep it real, and uh, yeah, ready to uh, kick some ass tonight, man. Big time, yo. And how about Harrison Jones? Yes, I guess then I'm I'm next. I'm Oli. I'm playing Harrison Jones, a uh, Arcanian archaeologist who is, at least in this campaign, <laughs> more concerned with hacking mostly <laughs> and uh, some kind of uh, battle assistance. But uh, maybe we'll get to some uh, archaeology on this planet while we hunt. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Let's see what's out in the jungle when we actually make it out there. And uh, so I'm Dev from the What the Dice channel, and I'll be playing Sekia Shabal, intergalactic scumbag and spice junkie, who's looking to move up in the criminal underworld and get paid along the way. How about our awesome GM? All right, uh, I'm Ryan from What the Dice as well, and I will be uh, leading these miscreants on their journey of story this evening and see where it takes them. <clears throat> So, thanks for the uh, update there too, Dev. That was great. 
Um, can I get everybody to please roll your force dice and we'll get ourselves a pool? Light side, light side. Dark side, dark side. <laughs> one white one? I don't think I've ever two rolled light side so far. Don't, don't read too much into that. Two light from the Dexter. Ooh. PCO, nice. we got it. You're shining so bright. Wow, got to wear that's pretty good. I'm, uh, <clears throat> wow. Wow, that's six, a loaded. Six light and one dark. Wow, seven force dice for this game. It's going to be intense. <laughs> I Easy. Probably need me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I only got one to flip, so I'll have to choose wisely at this point, unless you guys give me more to play with. Hmm. Well, let's see how this uh, talk finishes up with Moraga. <laughs> nice. All right, <clears throat> we're going to start with uh, the three individuals who are following Stim. Um, if I recall correctly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but you're generally walking through the ship kind of as if you belong there. Um, um, a modicum of stealth, but not in any way drawing attention to yourselves. Um, <clears throat> as you're kind of wandering and kind of winding through these various halls and whatnot, uh, you find yourselves coming into one of the cargo bays of the ship. And as you <clears throat> kind of step up to the doorway, you can hear the sound of some people talking inside. Uh, looking through the doorway, you notice that there's a bunch of crates kind of scattered about the place. Some of them as high as like 15, 20 feet. Some of them just kind of scattered around in the area. Uh, about halfway through uh, the warehouse itself, or like the, uh, sorry, the cargo bay itself, uh, <clears throat> you hear kind of the sound of one guy kind of <coughs> coughing and choking, and at the other side, you hear these other voices mumbling to each other. So, <clears throat> you hear this guy who you're guessing sounds like Stim based on what you've seen so far, and he says, What the hell happened? Another one replies, He needs the juice! Did you get it? <sighs> no, Stim replies as the moaning man suddenly grows very silent and still. They were all out of orange <clears throat> You can't see this. Yeah. You can't see this at the moment, but <clears throat> giving you kind of setting the scene for you. Stim kind of leans down and looks over the this body of this guy on the ground, and he's he's gone. Another one nearby. You hear the sound of a crate kind of smash. Damn it, Stim! And then enough. Stim barks, silencing the men. You know we have to save all that we have for now. We'll need it. Be strong, Ricks. They'll pay for what they've done to us. We will free all our brothers and make them pay. The juice is guarded. I couldn't get to it, but I saw them loading it into their hunting skiff, and I managed to download the handoff coordinates from that fool Twi'lex terminal. They're doing it in the preserve, those crafty bastards. Tomorrow, we enter ourselves in the hunt. The day after, we surprise them. We'll avenge Marcus... We'll get the juice we need to free the others and end this for good. Stay strong, my brothers. For honor. And the other two repeat, for honor. And Me too. And out of people saying they walk away. <laughs> I join in. Huzzah! <laughs> no, Do I you? don't. No, I don't. <laughs> Is that on the record, Harrison? <laughs> off the record. Off the record. Come on, we gotta go. Dax will look at Harrison and just say, like, you got a gun there, Pee Wee? Just point at my <laughs> data tap. Good. Uh, Dax sighs. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I pull my small mini, mini gun. <laughs> well, I guess that's better than nothing. So, yeah, Dax will uh, take out his, both his blaster pistols, but he's going to set them to stun. Me. Um, yeah, the same as you. I, yeah, I'll say I that hold on, blaster. Yeah, we gotta take we gotta take that big bastard stim to Maraga. Use him as some sort of bargaining chip so we can't kill him. I recommend we don't actually fight them because we, we we know what happened last. <laughs> well, just you know what happened last time when we fought those druggies. Dex, Dex looks at the captain and says, "Captain, have you got this?" <laughs> You see, you see his eyes kind of kind of shudder for a quick second, and he's like, 
Captain's not here. Just me, Red. Oh, uh, look at Harrison and say, we got this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, right, on three guys, we're going to burst in, <laughs> wave our guns in their faces, I and tell them just to chill the fuck out. I take Are a step ready? back. <laughs> I take a All step right. back. A priest him. Yeah, okay. All right, so... Um, so, are they around the corner, behind crates? Uh, what's the line of sight like? Well, basically, like, every kind of couple of seconds, you'll, you'll catch just a glimpse as they're kind of walking towards the, uh, more of the front area of the ship. Um, a general sense of the, the layout would lead you to believe that, as they were saying, kind of they're, they're getting out of there, um, there would be, like, a forward hatch that they would probably be making their way towards, which would be out of the cargo bay, uh, probably down, like, about another 100 feet down, and to the right, they'll be able to find a, an exit hatch if they make it. Cool. <laughs> As I said, you're kind of from where you're standing. There's probably about like four groups of crates in front of you. You're probably at about long range currently. Okay. That's moving really away. Right. I'll, I'll turn around to Harrison, the captain, and say, "On three, we run in." One. If I remember correctly, uh, our horse hit, uh, hit my the the stim peg, right? That I made. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah, 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 you're awesome. <laughs> the upgrade works, like, works like a charm, Stim. All right. The booster juice. Yeah. yeah. On three, one, two, three. Like, Dex will start running in towards him, and he's going to shout, Reach for the skies, big boy! Awesome. All right. Point, point so his guns at Stim. Well, one at Stim and one at another target. You see the, you see the three of them kind of spin around. And Stim is kind of at the front of the group, so he's now at the back, kind of as they've turned. And he starts to push between these two guys. And both of them kind of put their hand out to stop him. They say, no! At least one of us has got to avenge the others. He's and they like, push him back, and they start running towards you. He's not uh, worth it. <laughs> Don't they've do got it. a big opinion of you guys. <laughs> Considering they're giant hulks. Now, are they, these aren't, are they, are these the big fellas? Yes. Oh, shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was wondering what the hell you guys were doing. That's what I was going, why are we running into here? No, I took okay, a step so, back. I'm not going into that room. Yeah, so Dice runs in, shouts, reach for the skies, big boy, and kind of like shits himself. <laughs> so Stim, Stim kind of, he's, he's pushing against the guys for a moment. But then he kind of nods to their, their logic, and he dashes for the door. And the other two, as they start running towards you, you see them reach their chest and just like, click, 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 and they just start going. Yeah, that looks familiar. <laughs> Seki was on the receiving end of that before. Can I start running already, or do I have to shoot once first? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, thinking about it, like, if you can imagine, Dex runs in and kind of skids to a halt when he sees what's in front of him. Now he's going to turn around and start running back. Gonna <laughs> I lock the door as soon as possible. Like, no, get in, boys, get in, boys. Oh, <laughs> Harrison Jones, close the door. Get your hands close the door. It's like I'm sort of scooby Doo or something. Those damn kids. I hide inside the, oh, uh, the no. metal at the wall. What's nice. the call? Well, they, they are at long range, so you would be able to make it back to the doorway and, and close it if that's your intention. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's his intention. I, I call the horse square. I, I didn't realize it was the big fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Cinematically, Price, he runs in, giving the hair out. And she <laughs> out yeah, so you bolt back to the doorway, and, uh, and the captain is standing in the doorway going, Let's get him. <laughs> so are you going to push past him, or are you going to talk to him? What are you, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm push him, just push him in. I lock the door. Fuck it. I'm just shout, yeah, get him, Red. And I kind of like try and like... <laughs> push him inside and then close no, the door? No, inside our side of the door. Okay. The safe yeah, side. The other way is fucking me, too. If I have to kind of like run and then slide through Red's legs or something, whatever, you know what I mean? Just I'm getting on the other side of that door. Nice. Give me an athletics or a coordination versus just two, just for fun. Oh, mate. Let's see if you make the uh, sexy deck slide. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Oh, both athletics and coord are the same, so against two. I might yeah. flip a point. Nah, I won't flip a point. On time. <laughs> just slide between his... Oh! 
Holy fail. <laughs> So, so you go to you go to do this big slide like through his clothes, legs, mate. the clothes, <laughs> and but it just happens that that red kind of steps forward just as you do it. So the gap kind of that would normally be between his legs is it's there. in your face. He's just like smack right into his oh, knees. He's like, <clears throat> looks guys. He's like by like a like fucking it. horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great start. So far, you have two advantages. Those are okay. things you can do with. Them. Yes, those two advantages are, even though I slide into the captain and I get teabagged, I still can't... I, I, still can't I was thinking the same thing, thing, but I wasn't sure if we could say teabag on YouTube, but now we can because we did it. Uh, uh, and, and then, like... <laughs> but, like, the advantages are, I've actually, you know, kind of, like... Um, if the door came down, I would kind of maybe be on that side of it. I, I failed sliding through his legs coolly, but I did yeah. kind of like. Get yeah, so you got to knock him back a step as you as you get teabagged there. <laughs> Whatever. It's better getting teabagged by Red than just raped by them two big fans. <laughs> yeah, Seki knows what that feels like. It's not good. There's nothing good about it. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> It All right, so I check if they're behind the door and then just, okay, beep. <laughs> yeah, we established in the last game that you do have uh, the control over the opening doors. and closing the doors without yes. looking at that. So you're able to close the door, and it comes down. And I start bolting it to the next door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that this door will hold them. Okay, so Harrison's running. Uh, what are Dex and Captain doing? Uh, Dex is going to remove the sack that's <laughs> on the floor. Remove his mouth from the horse cock. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he's, he's basically going to oh, 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 oh. oh, <laughs> kind of get up and uh, just, just start running after Harrison. And for the viewers, I told you, this is what the channel where we keep the Star Wars real. This ain't, <laughs> yes. no, this ain't no tame stuff. This is this is like in-your-face raw Star Wars. <laughs> That's really what happens when you get a horse's jack in the face. Falls to the wall, mate. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> as you guys are running down the hall, you hear just the sound of just smash, smash, and you see the old like Hulk dance kind of coming in the door. And uh, we'll, we'll pause there and we'll jump over back to Seki Eshibal. I don't know. That's pretty entertaining, man. I don't know how, we can, how I can top that. <laughs> so uh, to recap a uh, quick moment of where exactly we are with you, you've just been given your debt with Moraga, and uh, the last thing you told him was that you may have some information that might be useful to him. So the floor is yours. All right, Moraga, your mightiness. As I mentioned previously, we had two complications getting this shipment to you, and uh, I think you definitely need to know about them. The first one, when we met our contact there, who was your... Uh, holds up a hand for a second. What? He says, if this is business, we needed more privacy. And he looks at the Twi'lek and kind of in his hut language, <clears throat> and the four Gamorians step forward and basically push the party, the whole party, back about twenty feet. So now so there's even this, less people around me. Yeah, you've got this ring of just you, uh, Moraga, and the Twi'lek guy. Your your buddy, the uh, <coughs> the uh, which we call it. I'm not Twitter. sure. Twi'lek. Twi'lek. Yeah, he's just disappeared in the crowd. <laughs> And even though no one's around you now, definitely people are, are kind of looking in your direction, kind of like, oh, what's going on there? So you have the kind of undivided attention of Moraga and kind of the surreptitious attention of the rest of the, the party. So, yeah, so, so Seki is like, uh, uh, <laughs> looks back over this way. And uh, <clears throat> so... Uh, Right. So, uh, as as I was as I was uh, saying here, um, the first complication was in the hangar when we tried to pick up your shipment of fine wines. We were uh, ambushed by the uh, Karas Consortium, and we managed to fight them off and secure your cargo. And upon further investigation into finding out what exactly was going on. It was determined there is a man named Stim, 
who leads a group of juiced up, banish, hulkish freaks, and they hired the Karst Consortium to tr and tried to frame them for stealing your cargo. And they tried to ambush us again when we were trying to get off the ship, off the uh, planet, sorry. That was problem number one. Upon arriving here, What's we that? found... Uh, <clears throat> so as, as you were saying all this, the, the Twi'lek, uh, <clears throat> his translator guy, his kind of assistant, he's typing some information into a data pad. And you can see these kind of showing... Uh, you can catch the glimpse off the side of the data pad where he's got like a, a readout of the Chorus Consortium and a readout on this guy, Stim, anything they know from his, his thing. Is, is he close to me? Like, are we kind of like closer together now, all of us? Yeah, basically the three of you are, would make like a triangle, whereas you and Murag are kind of face-to-face, -face, and then mm. the third guy is kind of just right over like his shoulder. Kind of. So I'm, I'm going to be kind of like leaning over, seeing, seeing what, he's, what he's typing there in, in, the, in the data pad and, and kind of like kind of like accidentally, not really accidentally, my horns are going to be kind of like poking him a little bit as I'm kind of looking what's in, what's in the data pad there. And the Twi'lek's going to probably be like kind of moving his head a little bit while he's showing the data pad to Moraga. And then uh, I'll, I, I won't like read it, but I'll see that it relates to what I'm talking about. And um, so I'll say, now here's the thing that makes this business a little bit more urgent. We don't mind defending your cargo. That's part of the service we provide here, of course. But when we arrived here and we're coming into your esteemed presence, we saw this individual, this man named Stim. He was disguised as a waiter, and he was messing around with some of the drinks that are going around here. So my crew is off pursuing him now, trying to uh, bring him back to answer some questions for you, sir. You can uh, see that Moraga kind of humps forward. <clears throat> this whole massive weight just kind of shifts, and so he's like almost, he's moved himself kind of right into your face kind of thing. And say, so, and he's like, "There's an intruder on my ship." That is what I'd like to confirm with you that he he is here, and as far as we are concerned, he is a threat to your cargo and potentially yourself as well. So, although I didn't have a chance to explain fully until now, my crew is trying to apprehend him. If if you can assist them with your own security, that would be fantastic. They are very extremely large and dangerous, and I'll just kind of like show like the gaping hole in my <laughs> in my clothing. <laughs> not not like in a threatening way where he thinks I'm like pulling a gun or anything, but just kind of like let the jacket open. He can see like there's like the gunshot wound that I had there. Yeah. <clears throat> so you you tell Moraga this, and he's kind of full up like in terms of you know he's right up on his kind of stump kind of deal at the end. And uh, he just starts yelling in, in Huddish, like, yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> and just this whole group of Gamorreans come out of this uh, doorway. It's near his kind of raised area. And there's probably about 50 of them. And they just basically make a line in, in behind this area where you are, and they just start pushing. And basically the, uh, the translator, Twilight guy, is like, uh, party's over, everyone. Um, um, it's been grand. We'll see you at the hunt. Good luck to all. And, and everyone's just getting, like, shepherded out, out of the back of the thing. And, he, and Moraga turns to his Twi'lek guy and says, lock it down. And the Twi'lek guy, Ch -ch 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 -ch. and just <laughs> all the doors, other than the exit where the uh, people have come in, are all just sh sh slammed shut. And so Sekia realizes that he's alone in a big receiving audience hall with a whole platoon of security guards, a giant humanoid sentient being uh, that likes to eat other people as snacks. And um, yeah, he's he's really hoping the rest of his crew can come along soon. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, now. Mr. Moraga, sir, that is what I said was only problem number one that we had with getting this shipment of fine wines to you. We had another Death unexpected war. complication. Yes. Um, when we were trying to leave the planet, we were ambushed by a sector ranger named Merrick. And he tried to blackmail us into betraying you and organizing a hit on your operation. 
You can we, see his flesh just kind of starts shaking in, in a kind of huddish rage. Of course. As you know, I, I'm the most loyal and, and uh, trustworthy of, of your servants. So the idea of betraying you never entered my mind whatsoever. So, but I think this does present an opportunity for you because we did not make it known to him that we would not betray you. As far as he knows, we are reluctantly cooperating out of coercion. But we would very much enjoy if you would like to take this opportunity to turn the table, so to speak, on him. <coughs> would that please you, Your Mightiness? Moraga kind of hurls. <laughs> Sector Rangers. Mm. Looks like they're out to broker their own deal. <laughs> he was extremely well informed of the finite details of your operation. I don't know what that means for you, but that is the fact. And he settles back down into his throne and says, Well, that certainly makes our handoff tomorrow in two days quite interesting so he would like to be here and he would like to interrupt that handoff and he's waiting for us to call him and fill him in on the details pertinent details of said handoff Robert, kind of how would you like us to proceed in this matter he turns to his his to like uh, translator assistant <coughs> and barks some more commands into the uh, into his ear, and Twi'lek turns back to you and he says, "The illustrious Moraga would like to get the information that you have regarding contact with this sector ranger. Our people will follow up on it, and we will determine a plan to help with this interaction that we will be having in two days." Certainly, my uh, my. Uh Technician and communications officer will have all that information in in <laughs> enough detail to satisfy you, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> all right, let's pause there for a quick second. Let's jump back over to Dex and Harrison <clears throat> uh, and the captain. <clears throat> so you guys are, are running down this hallway, uh, <clears throat> and Harrison, the first thing you notice is, is that your, your data pad does it like a ping, ping, and just beside you, this door is just going to go slam, 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 slam. All around you. Yep. Was that so, you, Jones? Nope. Somebody's shutting down the whole space. Looks like... It has nothing to do with Sekia. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we've been found <laughs> out or something's going on here. Let me just check. Beep, boop, boop. <laughs> Time to... Uh, do I still have How access to the doors? You do have access to the doors, yes then I would like to open just the door that we have to pass through and directly behind us close it again. Okay. <clears throat> so you open and close the door. Um, as you guys, again, you're kind of uh, moving back in the general direction of the party. Is that the direction you'd like to continue going, or do you have another destination in mind? No, back to, back to the uh, safety of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> How much... Info on this base did I get from my hacking? You have, a, you have a general layout and understanding of the ship. Okay, so which other interesting rooms could be nearby? Since, let's say, left. You, th you think in hideout? We just hide in the bathroom. <laughs> no, 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 just. just he's th he's thinking of hiding in the VIP room. With just want to know the options, you know. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the, the basic one would be, for example, uh, it's, it's a recently converted luxury liner. You know, there's gold placards still kind of in different areas telling where things are and whatnot. But uh, some of the areas that stand out are like, for example, the commander's quarters, which would be Moraga's quarters. Uh, the cargo hold itself that you were in before might be... <laughs> Don't want to go there now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that would be like the kind of main thing other than the bridge itself, which again is probably fairly well guarded and, and uh, Is the kitchen anywhere nearby on the way back? Kitchen? Kitchen. <laughs> I think we could probably find one. Good. Since we, we, we skipped by the party. We missed line. everything. We were doing the hard work chasing. 
didn't get all of those nice on hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> nice. Didn't, didn't get a hundred thousand credit debt. This this is the luxury ship party. Yeah. So yeah, you would know that uh, basically taking the next the next right and two straights would lead you to through like a one maintenance area into like kind of the back. It would be almost like if this is a castle, be like the servants kind of way, and lead you into like a kitchen. Perfect. That's just we, the way we like it. Okay. Now, now I make a perception food? check just to see if we go in the right way. Because like if if Ola's trying to like take us to some fucking galley to get food. I'm gonna, like, <laughs> when you got two hulks chasing you. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with his logic on that one. So can I make a perception check to see if we're actually going back the way we came? Sure. Or we're going in a different direction. Yeah, just against the standard two. Yeah, not a problem. Check this out. Uh, yeah, okay. Boom! Nice. <laughs> so you, you do notice that you are suddenly not going the same direction you came in. Uh, you notice that there's kind of a, a purple tinge, like almost like a trim line along the top, whereas before you were almost following like a, a green one because uh, you were kind of mostly making your way into the ship. Okay, at which point I'd like to stop and say, whoa, 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 point back to the, where are we going? To the, to the kitchen. <laughs> are you serious right now? I'm what hungry. are we going to the kitchen for? I'm hungry. You're hungry. Don't be such a gimp. We're about to get slapped <laughs> by two huge hulks. Let's they they get will never the expect room. us turning away from the party. Okay, well, do me a favor. While you go and, like, feed yourself, can you open the stream of doors back to the main room where we left Sekia? Because I want to get back to where those guards are. Okay, and then I open I all the under doors. I understand your logic in the fact that they won't think to look for you there, but I, I want to get back to where people with guns are. <laughs> I go to the knives. place where people with knives are. That's fine. <laughs> what are knives? Hey, guns for show, knives. But okay, yeah, I can. Yeah. I then I just open all the doors on my computer from like the direct route to the party. Thanks, man. So well, the, you know the threat I'm is you oh. hear the sound of running feet and someone yelling. I think they're this way. Someone's taking control of the doors. I'm going to the kitchen. It like a, a group of kind of running feeling in the hallway. All right, cool. Well, just tell me, like, I'm gonna start heading back. I, I wish Harrison the best of luck and say, <laughs> get back to me when you've had an apple. I'm, off to, I'm heading back to the party. I'm are heading are to, the the to, blend, to blend yeah. in. Yeah, where's the captain going? Is he hungry? No, he follows you. He's so way too suspicious. I don't need him with me. This, uh, <laughs> He's too suspicious. this, this kitchen mission requires a lot of stealth. Blend in. Dex and Drax <coughs> basically run open doors. Yeah, I'm going to start uh, heading to, yeah, back the way we can. Yeah, Harrison Jones, why don't you give me a stealth check? Why? <laughs> it's two. Because you said you're, he was too big and you want to be stealthy. No, nah, not yet. After I'm not in not the yet. kitchen, I want to blend in, but first oh. I just go there and... <laughs> All right. I don't want to stealth. I just walk there normally like I belong. Okay, so you're walking towards there and then these running feet are getting closer and closer to you. I use my... Pit tablet uh, as it looks like some something for carrying stuff. Okay. So this group of uh, basically five Gamorians <clears throat> and a Trandoshan kind of come around the corner. And the Trandoshan's got his data pad out and he's kind of looking at it. Shh. He's like, it's got to be just around here. It's got to be just around here. So why don't you give me a deception? Perfect. <laughs> Two green... Against two purple? Yeah. I would like to use the destiny. <laughs> <laughs> How, what do I get for that? Uh, you'll upgrade, upgrade one of your yeah. greens to uh, white yellow. Yeah, change oh. one of your greens to a yellow. Okay. And so one green, one yellow versus two purple. Okay. See what happens. That looks good. <laughs> that looks nice. Awesome. 
Nice. <clears throat> so these guys come kind of spinning around the corner here, and they're they're kind of in a run. They're like, out of the way, out of the way. Everybody's got to move. Everybody's got to move. Was... And as you're kind of standing there with your tray, quote unquote, <laughs> two Gamorian guards basically just as they're running by, just pick you up one each arm, and they're running you towards the the kitchen where you're trying to go to. Yes. They're like all all servant all serving members and all people into the into their respected areas. No one should be in the hallway. We're searching for intruders. Then and I, so I tell him I heard more into this guy kind of just kind of trunch down. Okay. <laughs> I, I tell him I heard uh, punches and stuff from that way to the cargo bay. Like ah, oh, I just came from there. Like, oh, cargo bay there. <laughs> and you hear the trade ocean kind of hits a earbud kind of thing. He's like. Checking in, yes, we just had reports from one of the staff that there was uh, some noises coming from the cargo bay. Uh, perhaps Team 4, you can check that out. <clears throat> yes, and keep an eye out. We have someone in our computer system as well. Uh, <coughs> that's going to be our main <laughs> That's going to be our main thing. We've been able to track him to this area, but so far we haven't been able to locate him. And so he, he kind of deposits you into this, into the uh, the kitchen. <coughs> and he says, okay, no, you can't, nobody can leave this room from now on. And he's like, lockdown protocol 3. And so he, he kind of turns around with these guys, kind of does a quick head count, to, and kind of types it into his data pad for how many people are in the room. And he says, okay, nobody leave here until we've finished the search. <clears throat> he turns back around with his group, runs out in the hallway again, and the door closes, and then a second door, glass door slides across it. Does he notice there's one extra person in that room? Who, who would he know? know the number of count. He's just got to count of how many are in there now. Okay. <laughs> Fortunately for him. Which, why, which I will edit soon, minus one. <laughs> nice. All right, Dex and Drax. Give me the one. By the way, I flipped that point for you. Um, so yeah, you thanks, I saw that. Out, but, all right. Um, yeah, well, I'm just going to like, keep heading back towards the uh, the party. Okay, at this point, you're not very far away. Like, uh, probably about a minute walk, <coughs> you'll find yourself. Um, fortunately, you managed to miss some of these guards that are running around. Um, <coughs> but you arrive back at the uh, at the entrance of the party, and standing beside the door, there are a group of about eight Gomorians, and they're all pointing blast rifles down this hallway. And you can hear, as you're moving towards them, <coughs> you can hear in the background saying, why do these doors keep opening? <laughs> <laughs> and the sound of giggling from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, so the Gamorreans yell out to you. They're like, freeze! Do not move! We have you covered. I'll just like put my hands up and go, step aside, greenies! we got some big, bad boys following us. You might want to go and take care of them. We're not the bad guys here. Come forward slowly. Keep your hands in the air. Okay, well, like as, as, quickly, as, quickly, as quickly as I can, but still considered slow. I'll like kind of start shuffling towards him with my hands up. These blasters have been holstered by this point. What do you think Drax is doing at this point? I don't, couldn't give a shit what he's doing, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably talking to himself in the yeah, corner. Yeah, he's like, fucking good morning. About pudding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Hopefully he's not red that's... Uh... Prevalent right now. <laughs> nice. So <clears throat> you kind of make your way out, out of the out of the room, and kind of four of the eight split off, and they they kind of make like a diamond pattern around you, where they've got you covered with the rifles, and they're leading you <clears throat> in the direction of uh, Moragus Dias. Hey, hey! There's my crew. There's my crew. Hey, Dex, Dex, over here, buddy. Dex, Dex, and you see like just these horns like <laughs> jumping up and down, trying to get past the shoulders of these huge Gamorians. <laughs> Hey, hey, over here, over here. Sakia. <laughs> Moraga says, they're with you. Yeah, yeah, that's my crew. Uh, I think one's missing, though. There's only, there should be three of them. <laughs> Moraga says, one's missing. Uh, Dex? Where's Harrison? St getting something to eat. I'll, I'll shout, but you were right, Stim's here, he's here, and he's got some more of those muscle-bound, ja jacked-up fucking Stim meatheads with him, and they were chasing us from the cargo hold. Maragi, you got some bad elements on your ship, and we're more than happy to tell you where they are. <coughs> Smile. Maraga doesn't, uh, doesn't kind of note your presence specifically yet. Uh, he doesn't look at you kind of thing, but he, he looks still at, at Sekia <coughs> and says... Give your information to my men. 
do it quickly. Yeah, uh, about that. And uh, I'll get on my call, and I'll be like, uh, Harrison, I need you here right now with your information, everything you got. I need you here right now. I just send all the message, all the data through the. <laughs> so my my com just has a flashing red light. <laughs> in Morse in Morse code. <laughs> um, oh, I can upload it to the server. I have access. Uh, all fine. Can Can you make this easier, not harder? <laughs> Time is of the essence, my friend. <laughs> Currently preoccupied, being chased by. Giant eating? Where is, are you chewing something? Where is, where is that sound? <laughs> I just imitate laser guns. Pew, 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 pew. Oh, and then I shut it down. <sighs> so I'll turn to Moraga and I'll say, it seems like uh, the missing member of my crew, my technician, he has the information on his data pad. And, uh, he's, according to one member of my crew, he's in the kitchen. And according to him, he's making laser sounds in the kitchen. <laughs> so... <laughs> While he's eating something, so that as soon as I retrieve him, then I can get you the information you requested. All right, can you give me a perception check, standard difficulty? Me? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Standard difficulty. Yep. Okay. Ooh. That's a failure and two advantages. Okay. Um, so you don't notice anything specific about Moraga, but mm -hmm. what advantages do you have? So there's something I fail to see. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's hard to say what the advantage is because I don't really know what. Yeah. Okay. You were you were you were trying to gauge um, Moraga's reaction to your news. But My overall news? No, no, in regards to this conversation about the information that he just requested from you. Oh, so he wants the information, but I couldn't get the information to him. And I'm checking if he's upset by that? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, the advantage is that I can, I, can, I can see that the Twilight guy is still there, and he's got his data pad. So I'm going to say, if you don't mind, your mightiness... Maraga, sir, if I can use this data pad and link it to my associate's data pad, I'm sure they can transfer the data directly and immediately for you, if that would work. <coughs> Moraga gives kind of a huff and says, your past services have been useful, but this whole thing is beginning to bore me. He turns to the Twilight and says, you two take care of it. And he, and he calls over uh, the Grimorian captain, and he says, apparently there's an extra man in the kitchen. Bring him here now. And about 20 Gamorreans rush off towards the kitchen. <clears throat> and then Moraga kind of heaves himself up and does his little slime trail out of the room. As always, it's great to see you. Pleasure doing business with you once again, Moraga. Our business has not concluded if what you say is true. Don't Indeed. worry. I'll be in touch. Oh. I look forward to it. <laughs> By now I'm so embarrassed. I'm just hiding in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. I'd like to start stepping backwards now and moving away from all of the <laughs> center of attention and spotlight, big bright spotlight. <laughs> just like a little bit at a time, just keep moving, moving backwards. Yep. Mm -hmm. Watching and nodding and. Mm -hmm. And just moving backwards. <laughs> yeah, so now you, you and Dex and Drax are pretty much in like a short range of each other at this point. I mean, like, dude, dude. Each other. We tracked Stim down, man. He was in the cargo hold, and uh, he was with two of them meatheads with the chest packs that beef him up. Like, I didn't realize that, so I jumped in to apprehend Stim and uh, then had to quickly double time it back here when we were getting chased by these hulks. Oh, man, sketchy shit. Well, yeah, I really hope they, they catch them because, you know, this conversation with Miranda did not go did not go well for me. Really? 
Do you not remember the great work you've done for him in the past? I think that's the only thing that saved my life at the moment, to be honest. And uh, it, it turns out that now I owe him 100,000 credits, and that we Actual are directly... <laughs> what? Yeah. 100,000 credits. We're supposed to be here making money, man, not getting fucking reamed. It's a long story. It, it involves uh, drugs and women for about two years. But uh, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm working on something. I'm working on something. So anyway, we're, we're going to assist him with this stim problem, and we're going to assist him with this sector fucking Merrick problem, and I'm hoping through all of this assistance that we're providing him, our services will be appreciated a bit more, and we can maybe get access to some bigger and better things, including Gundarks. So... Hopefully this uh, new debt that I have received will be gone someday. Shit, man, I, uh, I, I, need, I need a drink or something, man. Soon. I need a Dude, drink think, or something, man. I think you need something stronger than a drink. Go to your yeah. uh, stash. Not till not we're safely back on our ship. No. Uh, all right. So what the hell is Harrison doing in the kitchen? I, I mean, don't know. I don't, I don't know how his mind kitchen. works. <laughs> We're like we're getting chased by those two of those hulks that nearly killed you, and uh, suddenly he starts taking us towards the kitchen because he wants a sandwich. I, I don't get it. But you had you had Red with you. Red could have taken those guys. Maybe. Last, but, last uh, time it was just you and me and and Harrison in the cargo bay, but we didn't have Red. Yeah, I know. I mean, I took one down if you remember with my uh, rope thing, but uh, <laughs> nah, man, I wasn't I wasn't planning on it. I, I had my blaster set to stun. What was I gonna do? <laughs> yeah, this 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 is this is Moraga's problem now. This is his ship, his problem. All we did is we came here, we gave hey, us I thought, I, I thought I I thought like you know catch it. He'll now be able to capture these boys. Hopefully, looks like he's got the manpower for it. That'll buy us some credit with him. Get him in his good graces. We've alerted them to it, uh, him to their presence here. So, well, what do you want to do? You want to wait here and see if they catch him and see what happens, or you want to get the hell out of here? Well, we I'll, just, I'll, I'll whip out like. Uh, uh, the credit card and say, I want, I want to go shopping. I'm not finished. <laughs> okay, let's get the hell out of here then. That's fine Daddy with me. needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> I've, I've had enough of the hot spotlight for today. Hell yeah. Uh, Dex will look around. Is there anything shiny you can grab on the way out? <laughs> <laughs> there How many Gamorreans so are watching and, us right now? Yeah, and platters, uh, but there's a lot of guards. There's probably like 50 guys in this room currently. Okay, I'll grab a sandwich or something off a tray on the way out and go... <laughs> Thanks for the party. It was awesome. <laughs> like, Sekiel still have this fixed grin on his face. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'll just keep walking backwards out the door, <laughs> nodding yeah, at right. the Gamorians. Nice. Great party, guys. Awesome. Harrison, yeah. if and when guards come to the room, will you be uh, resisting them anyway? Question is if I will even stay there that long. <laughs> Since I heard, I heard on the announcing thing that he. <laughs> Didn't believe my awesome lasers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I guess since the kitchen, there must be a easy way out. It's kitchens. There's, they always need to bring trash away. So. Yeah. Easy way out. After okay. I I talk to some of the, just enough to get some food and then enter the number minus one and. <laughs> So I was never there, <laughs> and then leave through the shortest way possible. Okay, now are you leaving the ship, or are you going back to the where the other guys are? Ship. Okay. And how did you get out? You you went down the trash compactor. Whatever. Was it wasn't the whole room locked down with blast doors. As if that would stop me. <laughs> I'm the one controlling the doors. Remember. <laughs> so that's fine. All right, just tell me what you want to do, and then we'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah, like take the shortest way out from there, whatever works. And okay, seems... technically the shortest way out is, again, from the kitchen, it would be a short hallway into the room where the other guys are. Oh. Again, that's kind of the most direct route off the ship, you know what I mean? Boring. <laughs> okay, then let's see if there... Is there anything... Uh, is there any other way out? Because <laughs> that, I'm pretty sure that way is guarded. I can't... Again, but... you can... Do the whole garbage route thing if you want to. Oh, yes. Then let's do that. Okay. 
All right. <clears throat> so in the in the one section of the the room, there is the the garbage chute, basically where uh, all the items will drop down into a specially operated uh, airlock, which again, normally under normal circumstances, would remain locked and then open in during space flight, usually before they will jump to, to hyperspace. Okay, perfect. But maybe we'll open that and get it that way, kind of. Okay, and then before I get out, first thing I do is I lock the door, the doors to the kitchen with like <laughs> nobody else has access. Something like this. this is like a limited entrance. I only. Okay. Uh, that will be a computer's check. You'll have uh, one advantage for your um, your fact that you're already in the system, mm -hmm. and then we'll do two setbacks based on the fact that <clears throat> you're going to have to get this room done without anybody noticing when they already know that somebody's in the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I delete. My, then I also would like to delete myself from the from the number of people in the room. So like, okay. there's 30 people in the room. Yep. I was never here. Okay, I'm gonna add one more uh, thing to that then. So you're gonna have your check. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing like five green or whatever it is, or whatever your computer's is, plus yep. one advantage versus three purple with three setbacks. And actually, just for fun, I'll give you a light side point. So what are the dice? Exactly. Uh, okay, the. The other side will be two green, one red, three black, versus one blue plus your computers. Uh, the other side, what? So the purple will be two, red yeah. one, black three, blue one, and then your computers check. Okay. Oi, oi, oi. Three black. Let's see if I can somehow mitigate those. Because I... A knowledge <laughs> shake. It's not a knowledge shake, otherwise you could have us. Okay, let's see what happens. Beep, boop. Okay, so you are not successful in doing it, but you do have some advantages. Okay, let's say with the advantage, I just make it harder to get through the door. Okay. It just takes more time. And then, <laughs> just give me enough time to, to get out. <laughs> Like I, and I basically I reach the next level of access. Basically, I'm further into the system from all the stuff that I tried out. I found some stuff. Like the Gamorreans come in and see a pair of legs that get up the track. <laughs> 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 in a Star Warsian moment, we'll have uh, <clears throat> basically you hear kind of a pounding on the other side of the door, and the whole kind of room is starts turning towards that. Like, what the hell? And Ola does his big dive <laughs> into the big pile of trash there. It makes this kind of swimming motion in down in there. And the doors kind of come up just as he kind of his legs disappear over the edge. So Ola, you're kind of sliding down this disgustingly you know, clean pure aisle. Disgusting. Very <laughs> wide <laughs> almost. Uh, which goes for about probably like a good 10 seconds at a fair clip. Uh, and then you find yourself basically you, you kind of splash out into this big pile of gunk inside this airlock thing. So you hit this thing, it pops open, you drop in, and then it kind of and like kind of vacuum seals back again. So you're in kind of an enclosed uh, airlock. With one of the advantages, I hope I downloaded the, the scheme. <laughs> the for schematic? This. Yeah, <laughs> schematic for this thing. Yeah, it's a, again, it's a fairly standard airlock. Um, when nope. you look at it, you can see there's kind of a small porthole in the one side leading back into the ship, but it's got a big doorway that's sealed up with a access panel. And on the other side, you see basically the same thing outside. Like to the outside. On the spaceship. What's that? It's like Die Hard on a spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Now I've got a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our very own Hans Gruber. Yes. <laughs> Probably right, yeah. It makes more sense. <laughs> Falling off the top of the building. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, then the door to the outside seems more appealing by now. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so the doorway itself is a is a fairly you know again standard thing. The only thing you don't know itself is the code. Um, <clears throat> so just let's get a, a standard computer's check. Uh, it's going to be basically it's going to be like a. a dropping escalation of difficulty. 
Mm -hmm. like the closer you get to the codex, you have to run some, you know. Yeah, combinations. Issues. Brute force. So the first, you have, you have to get three successes. Okay. Uh, it's going to start basically, it'll be four purple, one red, three purple, one red, two purple, one red. Do you mean three checks? Four purple, one red is the first yeah. one? Yeah. So, right, because you're starting off not knowing anything about the combination whatsoever, and basically you're going to try to run the computer system enough to get the, the combination, like you get like your first number, okay, got the second number. It gets easier as you go, right? Okay. And easier means three purple? Yeah, so the first one's four and one, then yeah, three four. and one, two and okay, one. Three, okay, three, okay, okay, okay. Okay, then let's see how this goes. Whoa. <laughs> So you're super successful at it. <laughs> you find that first number, like kind of you're just like, D -d 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 oh, well, who would have thought it was that number so easily? <clears throat> and the the threat being is is that you've set down a, a timer, where the airlock is going to automatically open, uh, but it's going to open the other way, into the ship. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so your next one will be three verses. So three purple, one red. Okay, you're straight successful. You got the second number and then the third number. See if you can get that. That should be. Yo. All right. <laughs> so you you're able to open it. What what triumph do you get from that? Hmm. Hmm. Somehow I'm clean again. No. <laughs> <laughs> like typing numbers into it. I probably does the, the magic of a triumph. <laughs> I find I find no, no, something wait, wait. in the trash. Wait, wait, wait. I find you something in the trash. How about like this computer voice comes over the speakers? Decontamination pro uh, process started, and you get steam cleaned. <laughs> that would actually was, that would be a pretty good one. No, I, I just find something useful in the, in the trash while I still walk through there. Like somebody stole something from somebody, and they were. Okay, some... you know, the good that that makes sense, but it wasn't a triumph on a perception. Ah, uh, okay, okay. In so... regards to the. The, the, uh, the access panel. Okay, then I just find something in the like in the computer system, some anomaly or some remnant, some something that helps me for next time. All right. Uh, let's say that you're able to uh, when you're kind of in the access panel. The way that you got some of the uh, the, the code information was is you actually pulled it off the wall, checked it out, and there's a there's kind of like a it's called like a master chip on it. And basically, with this chip, it'll help you get through specific airlock doors in the future. That sounds good. Okay, so you 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 kind of hear this sound as the airlock kind of starts opening, and these kind of double set of doors, because again, these are main outer hall doors, really thick, massive doors, slide open, and you look out, and you see the ground about a couple hundred feet down. Mm-hmm. Couple of again, what? We are flying. Hundred feet down. If you recall, remember <laughs> the the thing that you're docked against. It's kind of like a straight dock out. The ship on the side of it, and then it's below you is the actual forest, right? <laughs> you're on a you're on a platform above the jungle, yeah. above the canopy, basically. Yeah. Guess I found a way out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Can you fly? <laughs> Can you fly, sucker? Can you fly? Can you fly, Bobby? <laughs> and I look around. Is there some other way? Not, not. I have a climbing rope and shit, but. You to the party? <laughs> yeah, I, I have climbing gear and all this stuff for. And you brought it to the party? <laughs> it's in my backpack. Okay. You brought a big utility backpack to a party? <laughs> I'm an archaeologist. Yeah, what else would I do? What else would I bring? Yeah? A whip and a leather hat. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. And a whip, yeah. Hmm. I guess, yeah. So, free fall, but I look around and says anything I can see, it would. Is that, or can I like, like walk on the on the edge or something? Again, basically, this is like the out. This is the outer hull of the spaceship. Mm -hmm. do you mean, so it is possible that you could kind of you know shimmy your way around to the side if that was your intention. But risky. Yeah. 
Your character pick doesn't look very athletic. <laughs> I think even the druggie is more athletic. Than do I, the question is, do I admit defeat to be found? That's the only thing. How willing am I to be found by these people? Not very much. That's the it's risk versus reward, isn't it? It's like you get captured by Gamorians or fall 500 feet to your death. I guess the embarrassment of both is a Approximately equal for me. Hey, I, I, re I reckon go for it, man. Try and like you know ha hand hand over hand along the rail or something. Go for it. We'll sc we'll scrape you up. I don't in the have to go all go the way around. Today. I just have to get to the next entrance because you know now I have the master key. I can go any in anywhere. Well, it sounds like you're talking yourself into it. <laughs> there we go. If you, fall, if you fall, then we'll come find you in a couple of days when we're on the hunt. <laughs> I'm in the jungle now, <laughs> guys. I'm we'll, somewhere we'll, in the we'll, scrape, we'll scrape you off, off. We'll scrape you up, man. Literally, the pancake. And when we find your home world, we'll put your remains there. <laughs> we'll <laughs> we'll bury you for another. How risky is it actually coming. to just walk on the way? I, I, I don't think it's that risky. You have, you have Sekia's on there. He'll, he'll put your remains there in your home world. Nice. An archaeologist might come and dig you up. That's <laughs> <laughs> ironic. <laughs> All right. There you go. I say go for it. YOLO! Do it! YOLO, baby! My archaeologist <laughs> tends to agree, but first he has to weigh the risks. How risky is that? Okay, give me a quick second. If it looks like it's like a 1% chance of dying, that seems fine. <laughs> it's oh, within it's calculations. Can't be riskier than being alone with a murderous hut. <laughs> That's why I didn't stay there. Well, that's why I didn't go to his Morian guard. So there's the there's the general look of the ship that you're on right now. Ooh. So you're kind of at like one of these little points here. Looks very smooth. Yeah, you're about halfway along. You'd have to you have to basically get to the back of the ship because here is where the like the, the big cargo bay where everybody had the big party was. If that was your intention. The way I see it, I just have to get get up a little. I can walk on top of that thing. If you saw the. <laughs> How good is my climbing rope? <laughs> <laughs> Throw the on top and then I oh yeah that looks fine. No, no, but do it. Okay. I think do it. I I just since I see this I'm like okay yeah, that looks like a free fall. I don't think in the trash compartment of the kitchen there will be a parachute. So I guess I just go to the other door and hick my way through there. What's that famous line Han Solo said to Chewbacca about his stomach getting him in trouble? Seems you ever tell me the odds? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's like, God damn it, Chewie, you, you always get us into trouble with your stomach or something, because he was hungry. I think it was on Endor. But, like, yeah, I'm just thinking, if he'd not gone for a sandwich, he wouldn't be facing certain death right now. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be out shopping with us. Huh? We're going to get some shiny new guns. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to waste my money anyway. It's not our money. So it's Ranger Merrick's money, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use our money for that. Yeah, hell no. We use our money for parties. Comlink, yes, I have a comlink. But the question is, how could they help me? They can't actually fly here, or can they? We'll catch the clock's you. ticking. Are you climbing or not? What are you doing? We'll go, we'll, we'll go down to the uh, ground level and just put our arms out and catch you. Uh, you would, would our ship be able to fly around and pick me up on that spot? Uh, your ship, no, but probably you do have like the smaller repulsor craft basically in your inside Ooh. your own ship as well. Okay, then I call my engineering friend I made on this planet. <laughs> he def I know he has a motorbike where he goes <laughs> flying around. I, I mean, he's an engineer. What else would he spend his money on? And he's probably more reliable than us to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, I'm, a, I'm in a jiffy here. Can you can you pick me up on this side of the ship? Nice. All right. So you give him your kind of details, uh, and basically he says, "You want me to pick you up out of an airlock of Maraga the Hut's ship?" Yeah, I've I fell down the food shaft. Now I look. I'm completely covered in yucky stuff. I don't. I don't want to go through the embarrassment of walking through that party. Nice. Okay. Charm or coercion? You can choose. Coercion. 
It's going to be standard difficulty, but there's definitely going to be two setbacks on it because of the fact that, let's be honest, he doesn't want to go anywhere near Moraga the Hut, but you're a good guy. You've made this friend. So two setbacks yeah. and two red die? No, two black. Two, two black. Okay, I swap uh, one more white thing. This okay. The amazing thing is that you know, this whole elite security force has no idea that there's a scientist just hanging off the side of their ship. <laughs> Idiot scientist. <laughs> Let's that say like, like, like it is. Or. Okay, so, so I get w plus one yellow. Yeah. From, from that? Well, basically, like if you had a, a green, if you had two greens, you would end up with one green and one yellow. Okay, I had one green, one yellow, so I have so two yellow. Two yellow. Against two purple, two black. Yeah. Still not good odds, but let's see how it goes. Yep. No problem. All right. <coughs> yeah, so you red are sense. successful. <coughs> this guy uh, gets on his little speeder here and zips off <coughs> into the uh, into the area around the ship, and he starts coming around and he picks you up on the bike. As you are speeding away, though. Uh, laser fire begins coming from the ship as you hear this blasting sound of intruders escaping, intruders escaping. <laughs> if I was pull down, well, pull down towards the forest. I would have had the threat speed. He couldn't get right up next to the ship, so he would have had to make a jump. And have to <laughs> so the threat should have been he 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 start, he's he's getting suspicious of me or like some kind of like I'm still I owe him a favor. Captured. I I'd like to see what Moraga does to him after going through all this hassle. You chatted to the guy for 10 minutes. I think he's doing you a solid there, man. Uh -huh. But yeah, now you're getting shot at. Where will this go? I can't wait to see. <laughs> Just out of curiosity. He's going like, oh, gee, oh my god. Was that, I think if we've, we've exited the ship, right? Do we yeah. see the laser fire? Uh, from your angle, you would probably hear it, but not see it. So I, my guess would be that your characters would think that either, well, likely you're thinking it's probably Stim. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll just I'll just look at Dexter. Eh. <laughs> Let's keep shopping. Let's go shopping. <laughs> Sounds like they found the hoax. Yeah. Job done. Let's go I, shopping. I check if I saw, somehow still have access to the. Since we're next to the ship, who knows? Maybe I can still do something on my data tip while we try to watch this. <laughs> Jesus, just come on! Unfortunately, you're a little bit out of range for that. Their yeah. Wi-Fi is not like that. Then I tell him just, you know, pull down. They can't shoot the in that angle. They can't shoot, shoot the, the trees. Full of gun drops. <laughs> <Or gun dogs. laughs> Go uh, spend a night shoot there. straight down, I think, right? Go spend so. a couple nights there. Just so you know, your air speeder has a silhouette 2, speed 3, hit threshold 5. Nice, you're going to get shot down. <laughs> yeah, so that's why we're pulling down already. We can't be... <laughs> that's so it, man. Head down, head down to basically the Star Wars equivalent of Jurassic Park. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Risk reward. Laser fire or gun darks? <laughs> if you have to come for that old dove. <laughs> Okay, sorry guys, give me a quick second here. I gotta find the. Yeah, no problem. I'm just. I should. Sorry, Ollie. I shouldn't be enjoying this, mate. But oh. you, you've got your, your stomach's got yourself into a right little pickle here, hasn't it? <laughs> I hope that no, it's working. it's my. Uh, what's the word? I, I don't Cubris? wanna. Cubris? I told you I think it's what's worry called. about plot and story tonight, Ryan. Just let Ollie just get on the mic here. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, <laughs> my like scenario. My pride. Last my pride. That's the word. Nice. I do like it, yeah. It's awesome. Okay, here we go. Do it. All right. So your your ship is kind of, you know, this guy's just going like, what the hell have you gotten me into? I thought you were my friend. What kind of friend gets me shot at by laser fire? <laughs> How would I know they would shoot? <laughs> I was trying to what get all of the trash. What did you do? It's what he didn't do. He didn't give the information to Moraga. <laughs> That's all he had to do. I uploaded that to the server. <clears throat> so nobody the, knows that. Yeah, the ship is again. It's kind of you hear the these sirens are just blasting, and this laser fire is coming towards you. Uh, the is it dorsal? What's the other one? Dorsal aft? turret. Aft. Um, top and bottom. Right. Anyway, the no. bottom turret. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, <clears throat> it's a laser cannon. And it is going to fire at your speeder. 
mate. We've got we've got this Ooh. game's got everything in it. It's got <laughs> shit. Oh. So you wow. are you are you are you guys are diving, and your speeder gets hit for direct fucking hit there, man. Nice knowing you, buddy. Hopefully, hopefully your engineers done ace pilot oh, too. That's That's high good. number on the uh, thing as well. Oh my god. Uh, oh, critical Goodbye, hit. Guys. Critical hit. Oh. I aim for the next, what's the on top of the trees that stops you from slowing the... Spike the branches. The branches. <laughs> the branches. <laughs> yeah, the branches. Yeah, the canopy. Yeah, the okay, canopy. The canopy is the branches. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you, you, you drop a, like a, a good half of the distance towards the, uh, the, the, the jungle. Um, what's his critical? Yeah, the critical is... <laughs> Give me one second, I gotta find that. It's on fire. It's so, like X-Wing. It's like village X-Wing here. Deb, can you find the, uh, if you look for two ship criticals? Yeah. I'm pretty okay. sure it's on fire or something. Uh, I, I found the, the regular criticals, but... I'm pretty sure you're in trouble. It's gonna be fine. Just kill him. <laughs> kill my friend. <laughs> I need to survive. <laughs> Critical hits. Okay, hang on. Okay, here it is. What is it? What do you get? 88? 88. Shields down. <laughs> so I don't think he has any shields, right? No. Do you want me to go to... Okay, let's go to the next one up then. Engine damaged. <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> so your, your ship has been basically... <clears throat> the speeder get, bike gets hit. And you're dropping into a kind of a, a sputtering flat spin drop. Like the, the engine's on, then it drops. Then it's on, then it's dropped. So it's doing like kind of the, the repulsors and then down. Pulsers down. So you're dropping at a fairly good pace, but you're not plummeting at this point yet. Okay. I appeal so. to my buddy's uh, engineering skills <laughs> together with my formidable uh, knowledge. <laughs> I tell him... Uh, I'm confident we can fix this. <laughs> this is still salvageable somehow. He, he's just screaming at this point. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? Still salvageable. We can do it. We can do it. I'm pretty sure you can't repair the ship while it's falling into the trees and you're still being shot. You underestimate. I'm, I'm not trying to override the GM, but I just mean logically speaking. Don't <laughs> underestimate the engineering skill of my yeah, buddy. I might be able to get some strain back. <laughs> oh, this shit. Uh, okay. Uh, Do you want me to look up be... how to repair a ship? Oh, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be using your mechanic skill. Because he's flying the, the ship currently, or the speeder. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> So your mechanics, you're going to get a boost for his engineering knowledge if you can calm him down enough to help you out. Yeah, let's but try that. The fact that you're falling, uh, have no tools, <laughs> and your engineer friend is freaking out. Uh, but uh, my character uh, is resolve, so I think he can... I can help him with his... Uh, from the strain. So okay. he suffers one less strain. Okay, that's good to know. <clears throat> All right, so this is going to be uh, your mechanics versus... I'm going to flip a destiny point. God damn it. <laughs> versus two purple, one red, and four black. Because you're falling quickly, you have no tools, your time is very limited. <laughs> and it's funny. <laughs> mechanics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, so he, uh, so the rest of the engines down is the sh the speed is reduced to the minimum, and he cannot he continues in, on his present course. He's not able to turn or maneuver. Oh, that that the sounds ship. fine. So he's he's still just going right into the trees. Yeah, it basically he's just doing a uh, drop, uh, drop. Yeah, uh, I'm drop. pretty sure the direction was we're going straight down to avoid the cannons. So if that's yeah. the direction you're going in, mate, that's, uh, and you, oh, that's a failed mechanics check. Uh -oh. So you you're kind of you know kind of banging on the thing. He's like, "What are you doing? No, no, I told you to hit the other thing. We need to get this thing. What? Are you not even listening?" Ah! <laughs> and at this point, he's just freaking out. No, no, my advantage is he's not freaking out. 
Okay. Because he's now thinking about the engineering problem instead of that we're actually f in free space. He knows. <laughs> That's my advantage. He's like, what are you doing? Clearly you have to put the this combulator into the... Ah, what are you... <laughs> so he's no. just thinking about that. <laughs> the moment dying. of quality. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, can you give me a perception check? Just standard difficulty. Hmm... Perception. We make quite as well to see if we can see the speed of bike flying past. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Why don't you all do <laughs> perception? So it's too proper. Yeah. Let's see. Yep. Success two and one thread. All right. Perception. What's yeah. our standard difficulty? Yep. Uh, two advantage. But I'm on the other side. Even I don't think. And falling into the trees, like we can't even see down. We're still on the actual yeah, platform with this no big ship. Yeah. yeah. You basically, you guys can see that the lasers are dropping. Uh, Sekia, you notice that there are uh, a number of the local ships. Um, I can't remember the name of what I called them before, but anyway, <laughs> uh, if you recall, this place is very heavily guarded all times of the year, and people don't just break into the park under normal circumstances. Um, yeah, but there's a security squadron being scrambled right now. Yeah, you see, you see these like there's like um, on the other side of your ship, there's like a kind of a small star starfighter shipyard kind of thing. Uh, and you notice uh, like probably about four or five of these uh, starfighters are kind of being scrambled and, and jumping into the air. <clears throat> and then the whip. Well, either look at that, Dex. Look, looks like either uh, Stim's getting away, or uh, I don't know, maybe he had some more some more of his men hidden on the ship. Something's going down, man. There's a big scramble. <laughs> Sucks to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be spending a couple nights in the jungle with gun darks. Like that. Or worse, or worse. <laughs> Dex is just gonna like ponder for a second. Go. I wonder if Harrison got his sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might be getting a bit more than the sandwich. <laughs> getting uh, lots of cream. He went to the kitchen. Well, maybe he's being, you know, abundantly helpful to Moraga right now. I don't know. I don't know what's taking him so long to get out of here. Maybe he's just explore, he exploring more of the ship. In the meantime, you're here on the setcom. Going down, <laughs> can't contain. Ah. <laughs> what? Nice. Uh, what the hell was that? I don't know. I just, I just heard. Uh, 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 and then Actually, and what, what was it? It was under fire <laughs> oh, before, good. wasn't it? It was pew pew pew. Yeah. Um, <laughs> under fire in the kitchen. Shit, maybe that's yeah. that Harrison. <laughs> maybe we should cut check in, see what he's up to. Nah, he's probably okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 you know, knowing him, he's probably like he's probably off like hacking Moraga's ship somewhere and and you know yeah, getting to his yeah. vault or something. Like, yeah, a glass of know. wine and an old dirt, and he's in his element, man. He's, yeah. he's never he's never in trouble. He just you know he hacks his way out of everything. He's fine. What what could go what what could happen to him on a on a ship? You know, a high tech ship. He's in his element. True, true. Probably never seen a ship that special before. I haven't. It's beautiful. Look at it. I mean, he'd call us if he's in trouble, right? Yeah, I guess. Like he'd just run off on his own and whatever. Yeah, uh, he's a solo artist. Yeah. Let's go shopping. No, I'm, I'm not alone. <laughs> I have an engineering friend with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, let's go. Let's go back to all of our main. That me and yeah. Saki were just heading off, man. Yeah, but yeah. We're, we're just, on the strange and the yeah. scrambling of jets, and we're like, oh yeah. Okay, what's that? Oh. We're opening up crates and looking at guns and shit, and we're like, yeah, yeah, what's going on over there? Ah, well, whatever. Yeah. Let's keep looking at this shit. <laughs> yeah. Tell us when we reach one of these salesmen that are. We need to get tooled up for this. Yeah. Uh, and, but yeah, anyway, let's come back to Walla for now. Because I, oh, yeah. so, I want to know what happens to him. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, uh, the. Ola, you notice as well that the. The canopy is coming up very quickly. Um, <clears throat> what you also notice in your kind of quick glance around is, is that there are <clears throat> two uh, almost like barge speeders that are kind of coming from each side trying to converge on you. Um, on, on those, you can see that they are, like they, these rose up out of the canopy, uh, and there's a number of guards on each one. The fuck is wrong with this place, dude? <laughs> They're fucking everywhere! 
hiding in the they're, fucking They're forest. ready for assholes to come in and do assholey things? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's an illegal hunting range. What do you think? Yeah, man. They don't want people drugging up the gun drags the night before. <clears throat> so your ship is probably about uh, 60, 70 feet above the, the canopy. Um, at the speed that you're traveling, you would probably determine that you are kind of 50-50 about whether you're going to kind of be able to take the impact on the, on the canopy and, and end up there, or if you'll kind of blast through it. But first we try to fix it again, since he's now, my buddy's now helping. <laughs> okay. It's better. Okay, so let's get the same roll, but we'll take off one of the blacks. Three blicks. Yeah, because I'll flip another destiny point because it's fun. <laughs> what did I roll before? Let's see. Where uh, it looks like five green, two purple, one red, four four blacks. So it's three blacks this time. Yeah. He's not freaking out anymore. Whew. And I don't get any bonus from him helping me anymore. Uh, I'll give you a blue. Just, just, just take your lumps and crash in the trees, man. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yes. Mm, this ship is pimping. Okay, you are not successfully driving the ship. But we slowed down our descent, and somehow lots of oil came splutting ring out in every direction. Somehow, all, all on the blocking the vision <laughs> from the <laughs> other ships, like all on the small window window they have, it's just splattered on. We're like, oh. Thank God, they can't see us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or just some, sm yeah, at first some smoke is going up, so it's like a, a from the top we are Smoke's covered. Really like lots of oil is shooting out to the bottom, <laughs> to the other ships, and our s speed is slowed down. So if we crash, the we just like a skid off. Like, <laughs> okay, so it is a pretty densely uh, packed canopy. And you guys, basically, the, the engineer, although he's backed onto your team, you can tell he's very pissed <laughs> about this whole turn of events. And you can hear him mumbling under his breath. He's like, this is why I don't have friends. This is why I don't talk to people. This is why I stay with the machines and I don't deal with people. This is why I've, I've proven it again. Thank you very much. I don't interrupt him. Uh, I, just, you know, I know what he's... I know. <laughs> So the, the speeder <laughs> kind of comes down and does a couple of bounces on the canopy. And, and you can see him trying to like almost like reach down at these branches and leaves to kind of slow down this thing. And anyway, so he's kind of, you see these kind of leaves pull off as he's kind of ripping down. And the speeder kind of starts to, to tip. Uh, give me a coordination check, standard. Mm. Coordination, yes. All right. <laughs> so as the bike tips over... He's able to kind of jump and kind of hug onto one of these big branches. So you see, it kind of. I just have a threat. Nothing happens. I don't know. <laughs> no success or failure. <laughs> so you're not successful in grabbing onto one of these big branches. But not uh, failing. For but you haven't failed <laughs> completely. Uh, the threat is is that you find yourself kind of stomach over a branch that is now breaking. Okay, but I'm at least stopped for now. Yeah, you stop, you kind of... <laughs> and you, you're, you're kind of not holding on anything, but you're kind of honked over, like, the branch this way. Yeah, and it's slowly, like... And it's going to... <laughs> Height check. What was that? Height check. Height check? About 70 feet. Oh, okay. Time to look up fall damage. <laughs> I get my, my, my rope somehow, like, and try to, like... Use it like the whip, and then throw it around something like. Oh. <laughs> okay, I, that's fair enough. Let's try. Uh, Might either, uh, I think that would be athletics or coordination. Both the same, yeah. Okay. For me. And we'll go. Uh, we'll just go one black on that because you're kind of hanging on. Difficult, yada, yada, yada. I use my. Super cool. I use one destiny, yeah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so I get one yeah, more yellow, one funny. less. I've got the fall chart ready. <laughs> so nice. I get one more yellow, right? And one less green. Yeah. 
And it's two purple, one black. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Short, shorter, medium range, he's going to fall. Short, uh, medium, longer, extreme. Success, range. don't worry. Nobody's falling. Yeah. <laughs> so you're able to get this thing around. Um, and as your rope kind of goes around, it does like, you know, the wrap, wrap, wrap kind of deal. And you kind of suspend your falling. Um, Rome checks to hang on. Rip strength. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, dude. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. God, do you? The two disadvantages are uh, that the rope won't hold on forever. So you either need to move to a better position or secure the rope somehow. Uh, I see yeah. if there's any uh, a bigger branch somewhere around. And where our our motorbike is and my buddy, like, just check the situation here. Yeah. Yeah, the motorbike itself has basically just tumbled off. Uh, it's probably fallen through the trees by this point, smashed into a billion pieces on the ground. And the, uh, the other guy is, is hugging the, the main trunk of a tree, just shaking his head, still mumbling about it. <laughs> Should have stayed home, should have been on his own. I don't know why I tried to make friends, <laughs> that kind of thing. I leave him there, fuck him. <laughs> All right, so give me a perception check. Uh, standard difficulty, you're looking around for... Uh, safer Gundarks. Yeah. Looking around for Gundarks. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're all blinded, as we know. Okay. One advantage. Okay, so the advantage is, is that there is one nearby. Uh, you're going to have to make a jump for it. Or, you're like, basically, you got swing. the rope, you're going to have to swing for it. Swing, yes. Yeah. No jumping. Okay. Coordination check. Yep. Just standard. See how coordinated you are. Easy. Okay, so you're able to grab onto the, <coughs> the the main trunk now of kind of a tree nearby. Okay, and then you as I grab yeah, onto that and I hold onto my rope, the advantage is like the rope, like from the tingling, like falls down or uh, like slides down, so I have the rope fully, not okay. it's not hanging up. There's got to uh, be a wrong check in here somewhere, dude. <laughs> Nice. Being very indulgent, yeah. Yeah, very we're not even tonight. we're not even on the ground yet, guys. I, I would have just long. crashed a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Make him spend a couple nights in the jungle. Okay. Since now I'm secure, I call into the setcom. Yeah, guys, I need somebody to p pick me up <laughs> in the forest. <laughs> so as soon as you say that, you hear a kind of click in your comms, and it says, "All all frequencies are monitored and cut off." from this area, you are under arrest. Please stay where you are. You will be picked up in moments. And you can hear the sound of the repulsors as these kind of platform barges are dropping down onto the canopy. And you see there's probably about 20 soldiers on each one of them. And they all have these big blaster rifles pointed at you. All <laughs> and the, uh, <laughs> about 70 feet. <laughs> can, they, can they chase me through the forest? Can they? <laughs> How good's your athletics? Start you're running. on the forest floor now. Are Not yet. Oh, no, you're still, still hanging from a tree. Like, but I'm thinking about it. I don't want to get captured. Fuck that. But I guess there's no way out. The engineer guy, he's he's waving his arms like, Get me the fuck out of here! <laughs> this guy's crazy! <laughs> like, and I, I just... Oh, my friend! Uh, okay, okay, I just do it. Please help me! He tried to... Uh, <laughs> All right, deception. Yep. Well, I'm just trying my best here. Let's see. What a shit house. <laughs> mm. Mm. Just standard. Seems, seems like they believe me. <laughs> the trustworthy, trustworthy guy. All this for a sandwich. Yep. A good trade. <laughs> Who would have thought? Now we know how secure this place is. Somebody had to test out the, the measures these people were willing to go. So the uh, the one the one barge kind of slides forward, and uh, you see them kind of lower a rope down to the other guy, <clears throat> pull him up, and they immediately kind of surround him, slam him down on the ground, knee in the back, the old space cuffs binders on him, and he's like, I didn't do anything. I was just trying to help this guy, my friend, and <clears throat> and they're like, shut up, <laughs> we don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and the other guy, one comes down. They I, just, I just, yeah, he's resisting, he's resisting. <laughs> <laughs> kill him, guys, kill him, this kill guy, him. This guy, 
And so the uh, the other guys they lower a rope down too. Uh, it's kind of the uh, the lasso style. You, if you can put it under both your arms, so it wraps around your chest, they'll lift you up. So they <laughs> they lift you up, and you get the uh, the rough treatment as well. And they're like, <laughs> you you know you might be protesting like you said that you know it was him, it was him. And I'm shaking like oh no, <laughs> kidnapped. <And> they're, <laughs> <laughs> so they're like all all intruders are taken in no matter what the circumstance. And so you get the old knee and the lower back binders are on. And they start to lift back up towards the, the area. You can hear them on the comms at one point. Uh, we've taken two into custody. We will be returning them to base. Uh, please tell the very large ship to stop firing down at the jungle. <laughs> stop, stop the lasers, guys. <laughs> oh, All right, let's go back to Sekia and Dex. They really uh, don't want to. If we hear this, yeah, if we hear this on the comm. So I'll just turn to Dex and be like, oh, there you go. It looks like, you know, Stim and one of his buddies tried to get away, but it looks like they got him. Dumbass is probably trying to go down to the jungle. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Soft laps. So uh, <laughs> what, what can we see while we're shopping? <laughs> nice. So, yeah, you guys are just <laughs> peacefully sauntering back towards the uh, the main hub. Uh, and as you guys get to kind of the, the main area, which is basically like a big arc, because again, all these, all these, all these uh, docks kind of come off the main hub part, right? Uh, and if you imagine it's kind of like, a, well, we all live here in Korea, so imagine it's like a Korean market basically around the, the hub. I mean, there's all these little stalls. Some of them are armor, some of them are weapons, some of them are food, some of them are this, some of that. So what are you guys looking for here? Uh, Sakya, man, we need to get tooled up for this hunt. What, what do you need? Um, I wouldn't mind a pair of uh, heavy blaster pistols, personally. I like to upgrade my, uh, uh, upgrade okay. my guns since okay. uh, everything seems to be uber ripped that comes at us these days. <laughs> I, I need to I need some ripped. output damage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, punch some bigger, punch idea. some bigger holes. All right, cool. Um, well, uh, actually, before we before we go gun shopping, I want to um, try and get some armored clothing like you've got, man. Like this shirt doesn't do well against blasters and I like finger the stitch in where it was like shot. <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking for some armor clothing. If we can find a, a tech guy who can do some uh, modifications on weapons, that's even better. We got two days, right, before the hunt, so, Think so. we can get some special customization things done. Uh, the captain is he with us as well? I guess he would. Yeah, he is. Uh, yeah, if he's like thinking about gun, big guns. Do we need any uh, jungle stuff? Any kind of survival gear and shit like that? I think Hammer. we might need some stuff. So we should pick up some of that stuff too. Yeah. Okay, so I'll get like the equivalent of like a shopping cart, <laughs> like which is basically like the uh, the repulsor. Uh, we still got our, our repulsor thing from the ship. We can take that. All right, cool. We'll just start throwing stuff on it. Like, yeah. like, like we're going crazy. We'll take one of those, and one of those, and one of those. Yeah. Okay, so let's start off. We'll do it mechanically here for a couple items here. Um, just because I've never done it, and it might be fun to try. Um, you guys are looking for armored clothing, you said, first of all, right? Yes, please. Okay. Armored so armor armor clothing for him and uh, weapons for me. Okay, we'll start with the armored clothing. The armored clothing is a rarity six. Which okay. means that you're going to have to use... Uh, this is a... Negotiation! This is a frontier planet, basically. Do you know what I mean? Like It's kind of like an outer rim kind of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Which means there's a plus two on that. Okay. okay. For the rarity, which makes it an eight but, but, rarity. But, but they're actually here selling goods to hunt like some of the most dangerous beasts on the planet. They're going to be... Okay, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. That. I'll take the... Uh, I'll take the the modifier off of that. Okay, so I need your negotiation versus yeah. four purple. Okay. Just to find out if they have this in, in the area. Well, I'm going to flip a point. Sorry, lads. Go for it. That's all right. We spent like um, three um, of them trying to get Harrison out of, <laughs> out of the ship. No, no, no. We spent four trying to get me <laughs> in the ship. God damn, I take purple. security. Yeah, four purple. Can, since Seki is with me, can he lend his swift tongue to give me, like, uh, or his keen eyesight to see if he can give me a blue? Yeah, what are we doing? Are we negotiating, or what's what exactly are you doing? Yeah, negotiation check. So what's your negotiation, Sekia? 
Um, I got three green for that. I'm a decent negotiator. Okay. Um, I'm not awesome, but I'm not bad either. I'll take a bite. what? One second. Roll. roll I am cunning, yours. though. Can I be cunning? No. Okay. <laughs> roll your three, three green versus yeah. three purple. Any result, good or bad, will be added to, to dexes. Okay. Major problem. One fail. <laughs> Sorry, but I, I'm, so I'm, like, talking, even, I'm yeah. talking to the other guy, looking at the guns and shit, man. I, I don't even, didn't even know you're, you're doing something over there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It was an even check. It was a good chance. All right. right. So I'm then, still like, I'm, I've got a crate open, and I'm like thumbing through blasters right now. That's cool. awesome. All right, so give me against uh, the four purple there. That's a wash for you, serious. That's a wash. Wow. So <clears throat> there is a chance that you can find some in the area. You were not able to locate it at this time, though. Um, can I I'll just ask the vendor? Yeah, I'll give you another one. chance to ask a guy if he's got it, and we'll figure out if he's got it. Uh, based on okay, um, okay. Basically, at this point, you can see that there's no armored clothing on the rack, kind of thing. You know what I mean, okay. you don't see it just kind of sitting out front in mm -hmm. some of these shops. Like you can see some armor shops, but you don't see what you're looking for on display, right? You haven't talked to anybody yet. You're just kind of looking around, can't see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll ask a vendor. Hey brother, need some armored clothing. Like these gun racks, man, they got some sharp teeth. Need a bit more protection than this fancy shirt. Got anything, or do you know anyone around here that's got them? Some with them? He's like, hmm, armored clothing, eh? There's a chance some of that's around here. How much would you be willing to pay for that information? I'm a businessman after all. As am I, my good man. As am I. Uh. Can I, uh, uh, can I can I make some sort of check to like you know so like we're on the same team here you know what I mean don't try and get a get a charm chorus I'd rather I'd rather deceive him okay um if well, being honest how what are you gonna say like how are you gonna deceive him give us the okay I'm just gonna be like that uh, well I'm just gonna deceive him in the, the sense that like look brother and I'll I'll show him Merrick's credit card and I was like me and my friends here. We're going to be spending a lot of credits. You know what I'm saying? Now, I can spend them with you, or I can spend them with the other ten friends down the road. It's really up to you. So let's for, let's forego the uh, the finder's fee, so to speak. Okay, nice. And so, then, sure. <coughs> I'll give you a, a... It'll be deception against standard. Yeah. I'm going to give you one uh, boost for the... The fact that you've got this credit card, kind of, you're showing it right there. Mm -hmm. I give you one setback because you're kind of going against what he wants to do. Yep. Yeah. So one blue, one black. Yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> so <clears throat> he he kind of he kind of gets his little you know trader grin. <laughs> ah, a man with credits, best kind, the best kind. He says. Yeah, I, I think I can find something like that around here for you. Cool. Um, maybe we can do a bulk purchase, and uh, that'll help both of us out. I think so. We need some guns. We need some camo. We need some binoculars. We need a lot of gear, my man. He's like, all right, let's, let's spend my credits with you instead of your competitors. Yeah, let's run through your list of items here, and we'll see what we can get you real quick. I'll just shout out for sec you. What have you found so far? And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach reach in the crate and pull out two big ass motherfucking heavy blaster <laughs> pistols with pearl inlaid holsters and everything. Motherfucking like really nice, sexy, pimping, pimping. heavy blaster. Yeah, pimped out, gold plated heavy blaster pistols. And I'm like, I got a big shitty grin on my face. Like, I want these, <laughs> and I want me <laughs> to pay for them. <laughs> Are there any more? They don't need the fancy inlay, but like anything bigger than what I'm currently packing. I was like, well, there's some, there's some good shit over here, man. You might want to, you know, take a little peek in these crates. Okay, well, I'll, I'll turn back to the guy and say, well, we want these two pimp daddy weapons for a start. 
but we're gonna need a couple more heavy blaster pistols if possible. Uh, the armored clothing, and then just yeah, some gear to survive the jungle. All right. Um, since Sekia is the one who's looking through the blasters, why don't we see if he can find four? Uh, he's so got two. Yeah, he's got yeah. two. But let's see if there are four in the box. So give me a perception. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll make it. We'll make it two purple. But we'll do one setback for the fact that. You've already found two, and what's the you know the odds get harder to yeah, find yeah, yeah, yeah. more as you're looking. You know. I mean, what are the odds of finding five? <laughs> then, uh, what's the odds of you making it back alive? <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty high, I hope. I'm sending out my buddy. Do you want uh, Do you want me to Do you want me to flip a point to make sure that we get some guns here, or what? What are you thinking? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no. Go ahead, mate. Let's flip them for fun. Okay. We got a bunch of them. Now, do you need pistols, though, or do you need, like, a rifle, I'm thinking? Nah, I want pistols, man. Okay. Uh, I'm not very good with big guns. That's the kind of heavy? Are you heavy as well, Alan? Or dex? Nah, just light. Okay, so... Yeah. I've, got a range, I've, got, I've got a rank in ranged heavy, but I'd rather have blaster pistols. I feel more comfortable. Yeah. Cool. We're not soldiers. All right, yeah, here exactly. we go. We've got the captain with the big gun. Go on, son. Yeah. One time. Oh, Bam! Goodness. Nice. So we found one, one extra gun, one yep. heavy blaster. You can do it one more time if you want. Oh, is that enough for the pair? Yeah, one more time to get a pair. Go on. Okay, do I, do I have to flip again or just roll what I already rolled? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> is this, is this for you? I'll, I'll flip it if it's for you. Is this for you? Yeah, is this going to be your, your for, pair? Yeah, 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 this is for my pair. Okay. So it, right. it gives Ryan more dark side to use for Ola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> ah, so there's there's uh, not a second dark. heavy blaster, uh, but there's some there's other. Good okay, here's here's I'll help you out with this one. If you you can change it if you don't want to, Deb. But okay. um, what I'm thinking is is that the pair that you found. Yeah. Uh, actually, let me just roll some real quick. Okay, the pair that you found. Mm -hmm. Are a matching set. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, but the other two that you pull out are not matching. So basically, like they're kind of like one's this like you know a Corellian Corsac blaster, and the other one's like a Zabrak you know light blaster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, okay. if they do the job. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I'm like, well, I found this, and I found this. They're not as sexy, they both, but they'll get, they'll get the job done. Are they both big and heavy? They're big and heavy, and they'll punch big holes. Bring them on over to my okay. to our friend there. He's gonna he's gonna give us a good deal, special price discount only for us. He said. And uh, I'm even willing to uh, trade in my old blasters to help reduce the price on these on this matching pair. Yeah, I was thinking that we don't need these no more, and I'll just take out my two standards. So I'll pull out my old blasters, put them on the table, take out the new ones. Pulse those and say, Wait there, yeah. price, what are we looking at here? Yeah, that's actually gonna... like when I'm checking out, go, oh man, that's a sweet piece of hardware. So. Yeah, I'm just going to be like running, running my fingers on those holsters, like, yeah, yeah. this is destiny. This is meant to be. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to name these. I'm going to think about it. Yeah, I would. <laughs> slick and slicker. Okay. The guy's like, all right, so. You want to tally up what we got so far? Well, it's kind of straightforward. Four blaster, bit heavy blaster pistols, uh, and yeah, we we want to trade. We'll tr we'll throw these into sweeten the pot, and we'll trade out our standard blaster pistols. Yep. He's like, all right, so let's. We got the armored clothing. We got this match set here. We got these two here. And you're going to trade in those four. Okay, let's see. To carry the one at the zero. Add the imperial discount and minus the find your condition. He's like, all right, I can give you the set for four grand. Huh? Uh, wow, I thought you were going to give us your special best discount, man. He's like, hey, it's a seller's market here today. Look at these guys. Yeah, that's true, that's true. And I'm, sure got, I'm sure you've got a litter of mouths to feed back home. So uh, don't want to take don't want to take food off the table. Four grand we can do. Um 
don't think Mayor could buy it that much. Yeah, I'll look at Saki and go like that. We got a five grand limit. Anything else yeah. you want to add in? I, th- I think. Well, it, you know, you got binoculars, just, man. You got. You yeah, got yeah, yeah. For, the, for the sake of uh, keeping you guys informed, uh, you may recall that you've already spent ten grand on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> The two days aren't up yet. He hasn't got his bank statement through yet. He's not yeah, yeah, aware yeah. of it. Yeah, the two days aren't up yet. Yeah, we literally spent that about three hours ago. So yeah. we're like, yeah, yeah well, I'll keep you throwing some, uh, I don't know, let me take a look here, maybe uh, some, yeah, scanner goggles and survival equipment, maybe a hand scanner. Scanner goggles, hand scanner, and what was the other one? Uh, yeah, I'm just checking that quick, what we might need. We've, we've got, like, uh, just basic stuff on the ship, right? Like, we've got backpacks and... Uh, Stuff like that, climbing gear. So Harrison already said he had climbing gear, so I guess we've got that on the ship already. You don't know that. (laughs) (laughs) So a hand scanner and some either like uh, macro binoculars or like some kind of scanner goggles, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Detect heat signals, that kind of thing. And we need some ration packs too. Yeah. What about a tent? You got a tent? Yeah, we'll need that. All right. Bear in mind that all these items have encumbrance as well. Make yeah, sure that you can carry them. Yeah, we'll yeah, throw in some backpacks. I've got a military pack. I've already got a military pack. All right. So I'll just I'll just grab like a backpack and start like throwing the stuff <laughs> in. Try and move some goggles, a hand scanner, and yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe an extra ammo or two, you know. So let's throw yeah, some spare clips are always good. Yeah, spare clips. Grenades. What about grenades? He's like, he's like, well, to be honest with you, explosives are one of the things that we're not allowed to use in the gun. Oh, dome. true, true, true. What, yeah, what are those stun right. grenades? You got any stun grenades? He's Flash like, bangs. He's like, I would love to sell you those too, but the fact is that anything that goes bang gets me go dead in this. Uh, it's unsporting. All right. Well, that's fair enough. What about any, any, you got any sights or anything, any mods, any silencers, any kind of reduced barrel shape, you know, uh, whatever. He's like, honestly, there's probably guys around here that can do some of the work, but if you're looking for it before the competition, you probably should have been here a few days ago. Fair point. All right, tally up. What, what's the damage, my man? He's like, I like you. He's like, uh, let's Everybody make it likes even, you, Dex. Yeah, let's, let's make it an even five. An even five? I was, any, if it was less than five, I was going to say round it up and keep the change. But, uh, yeah, okay, five it is. Thank you very much, my good friend. He's like, hey, nice doing business with you. If you guys got any stuff that you're looking to get rid of or if you're looking to get some more stuff before you leave... You well, I'm going to be Joey. honest with you. It, Joey, uh, I'm, you know, I'm we, yeah, we, we might have some stuff to uh, offload before we leave here. Zed, uh, uh, Joey, I'm Zed, and uh, I'm also in the uh, acquiring business. So uh, you got a business card there? <laughs> He's like, yeah, certainly. <clears throat> and he gives right, cool. like a, a little uh, hologram kind of card to you. No, they swap particulars. Hey, uh, listen, we're, uh, not being funny, Joey, we're planning on taking down the biggest damn gun track this planet's got to offer, so uh, don't suppose you know anyone off planet who'd line up as a buyer? Obviously, there will be a finder's fee. We'll put <clears throat> you in on that bad boy. He's like, hey, that's what we're all really here for in the end of the day, man. If you can bag one, I can get her for you. Joey, you're a good man, and I'll kind of like, kind of like just give him a, like, you know, a high-five type thing. <laughs> a Star Wars so, high-five. Like, yeah, <laughs> so he's, like, <laughs> and polishing the, the hilts of the blasters. Yeah, nice. Uh, now, okay, has, let's pause there for a second, and we'll go back to Mr. Harrison Jones. Yeah, I think, yeah, before you do, Sakia, man, should we just head back to the ship and start, like, polishing stuff? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's get this yeah. gear back and get it get it all sorted and, and uh, wait for Harrison to show up. Yeah, and let's not let's not forget to thank Ranger Merrick for his generosity. That's right. <laughs> We're gonna go and have a drink and laugh at his expense. Yeah, that's nice. true. Let's, let's get some uh, so, some party supplies. We never we never got to have our party yet, so uh, yeah. let's pick those Camera up on the way back. Off as we're as we're, we're too walking off, just chatting away about partying, yeah. carrying uh, heavy uh, backpacks uh, with stuff sticking out of it. <laughs> Yeah. The captain's just kind of walking around, you know, twitchy and moving with his gun. 
Thank you. Put back the backpack. Thank you. Yeah, he, he carries like he carries everything. Even I, think, I think the captain missed the trick here. He could have tooled himself right up. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> if, he if he wasn't too busy talking to himself. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, camera fades. It cuts into Mr. Jones. Right. <clears throat> so Harrison Jones finds himself being lifted out of the out of the canopy uh, on these kind of barge. Uh, being arrested. Things. <laughs> and these kind of head in towards the uh, the kind of stack where the docks are. But it's not leading to the top where all the ships are. It's kind of going about halfway. There's like a, a kind of a half platform there. Um, <clears throat> and the, these kind of ships dock down on the thing. Nobody said anything to you other than kind of when you first got on the on the thing. Everybody's kind of pointing their rifles at you and, and very stoically silent. And uh, <clears throat> as they as they kind of make their dock, the, the captain of the, the guard kind of goes, all right. Troop up, move them out, bring them to detention room four. I want both of them in adjoining cells, but let's make sure they can't talk to each other. We're going to find out what's really going on here. I we had a report from Moraga. Far away from that madman. <laughs> Silence, and you get punched in the mouth. <laughs> okay. <Too bad. laughs> and the uh, the guys basically they call you up, and they're they're bringing you along. You're at the point where you, they got you kind of where you're every every like fifth step is where your foot touches the ground, <laughs> you know, held up. Yeah. And they lead you through this this area. Like there's a kind of a guard station there. Probably about six guys are just standing right by the doorway, all rifles held. Down this hallway, turns right, turns left, turns right, and then there's into this area of cells. And all the cells are <clears throat> uh, glass fronted kind of thing. It looks like uh, probably transparent steel. And the, the guy with you, he, he's just looking glaring daggers at you now. And he's not saying anything. Yeah, you're. <laughs> hey! <laughs> he's just Didn't glaring daggers at you. Out it. And then uh, he gets thrown into the, the first room, and they move you to the second one. They throw you into that room. And between you guys is a solid wall that you can't, like, it's a Dura steel wall. I don't uh, want to talk with him anyway. Yeah. And then so basically the uh, the. the Front closes, and two sets of guards on you, two sets of guards that you can kind of, if you looked around, you might be able to see them in front of the other guy as well. Okay. I guess they disarmed me. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. I don't need that. <laughs> Do I still have my any kind of access to any technology around this place? Uh, not that I can currently think of. Um, there would be no technology in the room. Um, Not even a toilet that somebody could blow up. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> sounds familiar? It sounds familiar, yeah. <laughs> no, there are no facilities in here. Okay. Yeah. And there I is, there is basically, uh, in this room, it doesn't look like it's a cell as in like a, uh, yeah. a holding cell. It's more of like the interrogation room. Um, so there's a table and there's a, two chairs, one on each side. The table and the chairs are all uh, attached to the floor. And I... Lie on the table. <laughs> okay, he I'm not the conforming table. to to the peer pressure here. I know there's chairs. I like the table. Nice. So about probably like a good 20, 30 minutes go by, um, and then uh, <clears throat> you you see the guys out front kind of snap to attention, and um, I'm sleeping. Guy comes around the, the table. <laughs> guy comes around the corner and you know, opens up the the, the transparent steel and steps inside and sees you sleeping on there. <laughs> and he kind of cocks his head to the side a little bit and then just kind of stands there looking at you for a second. And he st steps forward and says, I think you should find the chair. Uh, I follow his advice. All right. <clears throat> so he sits down in the other chair and he's got a data pad in his hand and you see him kind of going... Ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay. And he's looking at you. And he's looking down at the data pad and he looks at you and says, well, that's an interesting file we got on you here. I hope you didn't see the pictures from 09. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with a simple question. What's your name? Uh, Harrison Jones. Oh, what's the name of the guy in the next room? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I don't remember. Yeah, me neither. But anyway, I identify myself <laughs> as Harrison Jones. The f you might have heard of me. Mm, yeah, it says here, archaeologist. 
could you perhaps explain what you're doing uh, jumping out the side of Moraga the Hut's ship into the jungle where the Gundark Open is about to take place? Yes. Well, we were investigating with our group the uh, these hikes running around, <laughs> or however they're called, you know, those big things. And they started chasing us. I panicked and just ran into the kitchen. I got picked up by some guards who threw me into the kitchen. I just heard lots of fighting and then I just decided to bolt. I didn't want to get into any fights. So I just made my way out and called a friend to pick me up since I was fi filled with trash. It's a very interesting story you tell. Yes. Tell me about your friend. Oh, I met him today. He, uh, I think he's kind of engineer and working. I don't know who he's working for, but I met him before the party and I, we hit it off at the bar. So you met this guy and then suddenly you're escaping the hut ship with some guy you've never known more than a few hours? I just... T uh, well, he, he didn't know he, I was escaping. I, I told him to pick me up because I couldn't go back to the party because I was dirty. So that's what I told him. You tell a very interesting tale, Mr. Jones. He so can, he tell can even me confirm. what brought you down to the jungle? Oh, well, <laughs> a few laser hits on, onto the <laughs> onto our ship, I would say. <laughs> We were not trying to get into the jungle. We are trying well, to. Well, our cameras show that you were headed that direction before the laser fire began. No, the laser fire. The the shot started. We pulled down because we didn't want to get hit by the lasers. Hmm. Interesting. Why are you here, Mr. Jones? Why are you on Davish Three? Yeah, we are selling some stuff to what's his face, the hut. We? Who's we? Yeah, our group. What are their names? Who are they? That horse guy. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Horse Guy? <laughs> That's how I call him. <laughs> You're a very strange man, Mr. Jones. <laughs> we were at the party today. We are talking with the... the he kind of slams a hand down. Names! Yeah. I tell him the names, which I, <laughs> I, I don't know. And I implicate so, one of the kitchen staff as well. So you, you give them the name Dex, Drax, and Seki Ishibo? No, the, the horse guy. The horse guy. <laughs> Only the horse guy. And the, the, the guy that brought us to the, to the hut. What's the guy's name? The, the friend? The Polarian? Yes. We hate him now. He abandoned us. <laughs> okay, Pligri? So he says, so you're telling me your crew is... A horse guy named Drax and a toy Darian named Pligri. I don't, I don't know his name. But yeah, that's he that. calls him the Teldarian always. He's weird that way. <laughs> he says, I'm going to be checking on your story. And he stands up and walks out of the room. Yeah, guys, I can't lie my way out. Uh, that, <laughs> that's not going to work. I'm just telling you now. I can't lie my way out of this. should have just told him all the names, but... <laughs> Like, just as he's about to leave, like, wait, wait, there's one more, two more. <laughs> and he kind of, he turns around and he's like, I had a feeling there was something you weren't telling me. And I tell him the names of the kitchen stuff. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm selling out everyone, but What's nobody my knows. Name? What's my name? Dex Marden. Shit. Oh, he can see it on his <laughs> overlay. He would have been quiet. I wouldn't have seen it. <laughs> yeah, he just popped up on his screen when he said, "What's my name?" <laughs> nobody, nobody know, nobody knows. I'm selling out all the information here. That's the best part. Which ship did you come in on? <sighs> yeah, I tell him. I, I, I don't even know, but my character Terra knows. Hunter, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. Terra Hunter Four or something. Captain's not here to tell us. <laughs> but all that information doesn't help them, and it doesn't checking, us in any way. So. I'm going to be checking on the details, and 
we'll be uh, in touch. Very, with. very, very expensive sandwich. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think it's a problem at all. All right. So basically, you're, already you're, you're left sitting in this uh, in this room for quite a long time. So let's jump back to the other guys. Who are happy? Um, you guys are uh, from. You guys are, I guess, back on your ship now. We're, we're about to be very unhappy when we find out what's going on. <laughs> just to sound him. Uh, are you back on the ship? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I think Saki has shown me his new hardware, polishing him up, and I'm. Yeah, we got it. We got our gear. We picked up. We yeah. picked up some uh, supplies. So we've got. got me all my some... clothing on, feeling good. I've took. Yeah. I've left my black jacket in my in my uh, uh, my cabin because mm -hmm. the encumbrance. So I've taken that off and replaced it with the armor clothing. But yeah, yeah, so looking you guys are good. Hanging out there. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, probably about an hour or so has gone by since you returned from your shopping trip. Um, and as you guys are kind of doing whatever you're doing at that time, you hear a, a communication come over the, the shipwide, and basically it comes on. This is Captain Anders. Um, permission to come aboard. We have some questions about your stay here on Divers 3. Sure, man. Yeah, not a problem. Beep, and I'll activate the hatch. Nothing's a high idea. yet. So Saki so will holster and load and arm his blasters before that door opens. <laughs> so yeah, the the you guys uh, are you using like the door? Or are you using like the cargo bay? Or what's your uh, well, what's that, like, the drop hatch thing? Yeah, yeah, we're on the ship, so the ramp, I guess, if you want to yeah. come up. Yeah, so the ramp lowers down, uh, and you see outside there's a, a guy dressed in like a basically like a you know jungle camo kind of thing. Um, he's got his Got a stars and bars kind of deal, uh, and he's kind of what flanked by the captain. He's flanked by about six guards, and he he kind of steps oh, forward. Yeah. And the guards, three of them stay facing you, three of them kind of turn around facing back down the, the dockway, mm -hmm. and he steps on board and gives you kind of a, a hat tip and says, "Well, gentlemen, uh, I have a few questions for you. First sure. of all, uh, what are I'll your take names?" That literally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> charm, roll charm. <laughs> he's got his yeah. data pad. And it looks like he, he, like you can't really see what's on it, kind of thing, but it definitely looks like he's got like a, you know, like he's kind of checking a list, like looking back and forth between yeah. you and his data. Pad. I'm Z Zed Nidrum. Zed Nidrum, and that's the name yeah. I used to register for the tournament, by the way. Yep. Ah, oh, yes, I see you're uh, registered here as uh, one of the hunters. And you? Yes, sir. You Thank you. Bye. Uh -huh. Me? Yeah, yeah, you. Ah, uh, my name is uh, Glit. Tur Glit. Tur Glit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> First name Tur, last name Glit. Nice speech, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just got it. It just, it just sank in the like. <laughs> And then he kind of points it at the the big horse guy, and he's like, "And what about you?" His name's he, Red. Yeah, he's like Red on, on his bad days. He's like Red, Captain. Red. Captain. His name's Captain. Captain, 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 Captain Red. Captain Red is what we call him. He's, best he's the best to call him Captain. Ship. Yeah. He likes it better than. Red. Red. Yeah. He gets. He can get a bit touchy if you call him Red. So we just yeah. call him Captain. But his only friends can call him Red. Yeah. We call him the, the the captain kind of nods for a second and then he looks di directly kind of right in, in the Dex's eyes and he says, well, "It's interesting because I have here Dex and he looks at Drax and says Drax and Sekia as your names." Well, where did you get that from? Well, uh, we have a shall we say a guest in our detention center. Who gave us that information? Can I make a knowledge? Can I look around and notice that there's a diminutive member of our party missing? I, I think you know. <laughs> I think you still know because oh, right. you were talking about it before, and he hasn't returned. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you can roll for it. Archaeologist. <laughs> a guest? Uh, who? He's like uh, one. And he checks his thing, Mr. Harrison Jones. <laughs> Who's that? Perhaps you heard the fireworks earlier. 
Uh, oh, was, Dex, uh, he's the guy that was that was digging, trying to dig holes around outside of our ship, and we saw him. and We asked him like, "What are you doing here?" And we had to chase him off. And he, he's trying to ask yeah. us a bunch of questions and come in the ship. And he's trying to like he's trying to join our crew and asking us like who we are and what we're doing here. Yeah, we got rid of him finally when you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We met a little rodent-looking guy, white yeah, skin, yeah, white like, hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, we he was really smell like yeah, yeah. We, we just got rid of that guy. We had to go to the party, you yeah. know. That's, that was okay, good. Time out, time Basically, out. Can, we, can we can we do a deception on we're that? We're fast talking here. Yeah, we're, ha we're happy to roll deception rolls on that. Now again, uh, what I'm going to ask you is basically, yeah, you can either ro roll it or you can role play it. I'm happy with either one. We can just keep going with the conversation, or you can make the, the checks if you want to do no, that. No, it's role play. That's it, it, up to you. And then so, they check uh, the camera feed for one second and see us walking around the whole time. <laughs> Well, yeah, you were bothering us. That's our story. It's you're bothering us, but we finally got rid of it. You kept following us around and, and talking we, to us we, and everything. We, we, we palmed them off onto some dude with a speeder bike. He, he, he left us alone and went and started talking to some other guy. Yeah, we finally so ditched him at the party. This is very interesting information because the, the stories are not matching up right now. Let me tell you what I was told, and then you tell me what's right and what's wrong. Sure, of sure. course, of course. And he's got kind of a very you know straight, straight face and says... The details I have are this Mr. Harrison Jones came on planet with you and your ship. Uh, he then attended the party at Moraga's ship with you, at which point you were separated. He and you chased some man named Stim and large, and he kind of looks around, large brute guys. And what else do we have here? Uh, at which point he was chased into a kitchen by some guards, and then he managed to have himself thrown out with the trash somehow, and was picked up by the engineer on his speeder bike, at which point the huts opened fire, and his vehicle was brought down into the canopy where he was taken into custody by... Oh, looks like Captain Regley. Oh, Harrison Jones. Well, no, like I ask you, Captain. Like, come on, does, doesn't that sound like a lunatic to you? I mean, we're legitimate hunters. We're registered for the tournament. We're just sitting peacefully on our ship, preparing, and we're not causing any trouble. We're not making any anything any problems here for anybody. But Second, you know, this uh, individual that uh, you've, you know. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I almost, I almost said second. Uh, um, <laughs> let, 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 let's just come, like, okay, Captain. All right, you got us. He uh, did come to the world of us. Uh, uh, he, he came, he, no, but we were just, we. he was basically a paying passenger. He asked for transport to this ship, something about wanting to dig in dirt, find some old bones or something. So he he's was looking a for paying, his homeworld or something. Yeah, he basically he was a pay. We we brought him from A to B, and then that was it. Our, our obligation with the man was finished. And we, we tried to ditch that, him after that, you know. Yeah, we, we we said look, we're going to a party, and like because he seemed like really us in. desperate for friends. He was just like, can I come with you guys? And uh, that oh, was the last we saw him on, on on the ship. Give me one quick right. second. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> you can talk about amongst yourselves for a quick second. I need one minute. Okay. Mm. Right. And then so, you know, like what good. what what he did after that is his own business. We went to the party, we dished him at the party, and that's it. Exactly. What happened after that is nothing to do with us. Look, he paid well to be brought here, so yeah. he's not part of the crew. He was just a paying fare. That's right. And once we got here, he was gonna go off and do his own thing, um, which he did disappear for a while. But then he came back to the ship, saying he wanted to go to the party, and could we get him in there? So, you know, we, we took him along with us because we had invites. And uh, that was the last we, we just saw got him. here. It's, it's not like he had anywhere else to go. Yeah. yeah. We just came for the, the hunt's opening ceremony. And, you know, if you can make 2,000 credits bringing along a passenger for somewhere you're already going anyway, yeah. hey, why not? Yeah, so, so you know, as we were just discussing, I'm uh, paying our illustrious crew game master. For digging. That makes sense. You know, we, we brought him here and, we, we you know, we... He was touring around, making friends and everything. We were getting ready for the party. We He followed us into the party, and uh, we ditched him there, and uh, we haven't seen him since. And whatever I, he's I, done I, since then is his I'll own business. You, it's nothing I'll to do with you, us. I'll give you the receipt to prove that he paid to come on the ship, but uh, it was a cash, he, he insisted on off-the-books 
cash in hand kind of transport. So I've got no record of us receiving his money. But yeah, basically we thought we're coming for the hunt, and hey, let's make an, let's make two thousand credits, and like you know, so we can put towards some new gear, and like you know, I'll point to Secu's shiny pistols, and be like, you know, if if we'd have known he was gonna kind of like get into trouble, shit, we would have had nothing to do with him, honestly, Captain. Why? Yeah, you, you know, like you gotta be careful with that one. You gotta be careful with that one too. He's pretty good with computers, so you know, don't mm. leave him alone with the data pad or anything like that. Why yeah. do you think he would have gone to the surface? Surface of what? Down to the jungle. He we don't know if he went. He told us he went to the jungle. Yeah, Why he, would he was he arrested. Have well, I he was arrested down there. I imagine because he wanted to dig up some. Bones. That's that's what he told us he was. He wanted to come here and start excavating stuff, looking for he's looking for artifacts of his homeworld on the black market. I think uh, I think he's got criminal ties. Yeah, you know. So we couldn't wait to get him. He's been nothing but trouble since we picked him up. So you know, we're we're happy to just you know wash our hands and leave him in your in your custody. It's, it's not whatever ju whatever justice. You deem necessary. <laughs> Feel free to bowl it out. We're just we're just here for the hunt, and we're not interested in making any trouble for anybody. Once once we bagged our <laughs> as a move for all the viewers, yes, this is Edge of the Empire, <laughs> and these are the scum and villain of the. <laughs> we are the scumbags of the Edge of the Empire universe. <laughs> we sell out our own party members. <laughs> Wow. After being sold out in the first. Yeah, after place. we got. I think it's fair. <laughs> we got sold out first. Because there's no disadvantage to us if they know it, I think, but... There's no disadvantage right now either. Everything's fine. <laughs> I don't know, like, six, six armed guys and a captain turning up asking rather personal questions. Uh, so, so, GM, what's the, his yeah. response to all that? I, I so, think we saw him. He's, so he's, he's making kind of... Citizens. He's making, like, taps and, and, and motions on his, on his uh, data pad, and he says, well... A lot of your stories checking out here. We had a talk with this engineer, and he seemed pretty darn pissed at this guy, too. He's an asshole. I just, man. I just don't know what to think. Me. We're getting a lot of pressure from the uh, from Moraga to make this investigation quick and, well, shall we say, permanent. In some if, I was you, for... if I was you, and, and this is just an advice, a big block of carbonite and stick his ass in there. <laughs> That's a little bit expensive. I, mean, I don't think he's worth all that trouble. I mean, just just let him loose in the jungle for a while, you know. That, the problem will take go, care of itself. Let, let him go digging. Let him go digging. Yeah, he, wants, he, wants, he loves digging holes. So put him down in the jungle, just leave him there, and problem solved. Job done. <laughs> and I'll make a, 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 like a hand motion motion. <laughs> he's like, well, <clears throat> he notes a couple things more in his data pad. He says, well, it's good that you guys are here for the hunt, because there's very likely I'll have some more questions, and I don't think it'll be uh, I don't think it'll be possible for you to leave planet. For I assure I assure you, Captain. Like we're we're you know law-abiding citizens of this this outpost. We're just here legitimately for the hunt, and we're not interested in causing anybody problems. So we're going to be here peacefully until the hunt. We're going to participate in the hunt, and then we are going to. Leave peacefully after that. No trouble for you know, anybody. You know where we are. How? You know, yeah. We'll, we'll, but you know, you'll be able to notice if our ship started to leave. Uh, but you know, we're here for the hunt. So yeah, just if you got any further questions, please feel free to come back. But if you wouldn't mind, this is a private party. We can't. It's a tradition that we get hammered the night before a hunt. So uh, if you uh, don't mind. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Like, yeah, I think we can like spare a bottle, right? For for the captain, I mean, he's, work, he's working hard today because of this, you know, this dick in, in, in the archaeologist that's that's you know causing all this trouble. He could have been relaxing and enjoying himself as well, but you know, he's got all this extra work to do. So I think you know, uh, let's I'll, give him a I'll bottle. The Corellian good stuff. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for you, captain, you captain, for your diligent service and uh, extra efforts yeah. today. This this is the good stuff. This isn't no swill that you'd find in the Tatooine cantina. This is a uh, shattered Somebody, somebody roll just a standard charm, one of you guys, and uh, see if he takes it or not. Oh yeah. Uh, I hope you right. miserably fail. <laughs> <laughs> There's no I in team. <laughs> <laughs> can I get it? Wait, can I? Okay. Too late. Oh, anyway, yeah. three successes and 
Just right. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so he he takes it. He's like, well, truth be told, we're not supposed to accept gifts from entrants in the. Look, oh, it's, it's, well, a, it's a courtesy. It's a courtesy. We appreciate again, you well, the time. Well, we, we don't want to. You don't want to make any waves here. So you know. I know that some of my my men are going off duty soon, and uh, well, perhaps if they they look kind of thirsty. I'll tell you what, we'll just we'll just leave it like you know outside, outside of our ship, just just next to the ship, next to the landing ramp. We'll just we'll just leave it there, and uh, if and it's if there it happens, in the morning, we'll pick it up again. And if it's yeah. gone, well, whatever. That's life, right? That's our mistake for leaving it out there. He's like. Hmm. Again, we'll probably be in touch, but you gentlemen have a nice day. You too. You, Captain. Good luck persecuting him yeah. to the fullest extent of the law. Yeah. Feel free to keep him in custody just so we can all make sure there's no further incidents before this hunt starts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then we're like, you know, like just we, we do not want to be further associated with any complications that he might cause. So, <laughs> for our benefit Captain and yours. Sure the rap will come back up. Yeah. For the safety of all the participants, I think it's the best thing. So I'm out of and go, what a piece of shit. <laughs> so I can't that, did that. How did it, that guy knew my name? I've been Zed Madrin since I got on this, Zed Nidram since I got on this planet. I can't believe the prof sold us out, man. Like yeah, He did fully. Balls of jelly, man. Balls of jelly. <laughs> and, uh, like, you can see he's locked in a room without a computer for five minutes, he just spills all the beans. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, and then it's like a screen wipe that <laughs> leaves yeah. us talking, and then yeah. <laughs> so the we go back to uh, to Harrison, who's still in this cell, tapping um, music on the table. Until <laughs> 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 he finds out he's going to be in custody for two days. Yeah, a few minutes. Don't few be minutes fine. Go by. You know, it's been probably like two hours, three hours since you've been brought into this into this area, and uh, <clears throat> shortly as you're kind of doing your tap here. Uh, the captain walks back in front of your thing, and he turns around, so he's facing the other way, and you can see that he's talking to somebody there. And he's got kind of a smile on his face, and he's talking, and he kind of gives a couple of nods, and then he kind of reaches his hand out. Uh, and <clears throat> the person steps forward, and it's the engineer. And he's smiling as well, and he kind of shakes the captain's hand. And he kind of turns to you and glares. I just say sorry. <laughs> he doesn't hear you. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> he, he kind of... You can you can imagine he's probably mumbling something still about like you know friends in wrong places. Yeah, like that. <laughs> totally fine. Yeah, and shortly thereafter, the the captain kind of watches him walk out of the building, and then he steps into the room with you, closes the the transpair steel, and he kind of sets his data pad back down on, on the table and sits down, leans back in his chair. <sighs> well, that's an interesting group. <laughs> yep. Seems that you uh, brokered passage to get here, and they have no association with you whatsoever beyond that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> you know, since technically I am an archaeologist, you could say they don't actually <laughs> follow my. <laughs> starts crying. <laughs> I guess they were not my friends. <laughs> Shit, we should have told them not to drop the soap. No, now we now we see how he treats his friends. So, <laughs> friends like that, who needs enemies, huh? <laughs> wow. We this got more trouble. Here. We got more trouble from him than we got from the hut. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Jones, why don't you tell us all why you're really here? You really have to know. I've been sent as a smooth criminal. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Get on the gloves. That's why I'm a bino. No. No, I just tell him I've been sent here to, you know, infiltrate and look for some ancient relics that have been hidden on the planet. I paid the guys to take me to the planet and uh, escort me down to the uh, to the ground to protect me during the during the hunt so I can investigate the some relics further 
you are aware that that is not in the spirit of the hunt. Well, of course, but I mean, it's impossible to get down to the uh, planet for any other reason, so I had to, you know, use it as a front. Mm. This still doesn't explain to us why you were seen leaving Moraga's ship in such a surreptitious manner. Oh, it, it part's still the same as before. I was at the party and we were uh, yes, running away you from see, the... Your story doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense because all the other passengers and all the other guests were escorted out the out the out of the ship, and you're the only person that came out in a strange way. How do you explain that? Check the video logs. That's all I tell me. Like, it checks out. That's what I did. Well, unfortunately for everyone involved, the hut is not releasing this video. Hmm. Well. <laughs> I guess <laughs> that sucks for me then. <laughs> that sucks for me then. So let's go over this one more time. Yes. Why were you seen leaving the ship? And why were you there? I was meeting my contact in the during the when during the shutdown happened and I had to get a, make a getaway since we are. Uh, I was not able to take the normal exit since I was in a forbidden quarters. So I tried to sneak my way out. Who is your contact? <laughs> I, he I hesitate to say it. I don't hesitate to ask. Someone is clearly breaking our security protocols. The, the, which part? Which part? The fact is, is we have an individual who is somewhere they're not supposed to be outside of ships in restricted airspace. I was at the party at, in a restricted area which he's not working for the hut, right? This guy? No, no, he works for the for the planet. Planet, yeah. So that totally makes sense. Yeah, I was at the party in a forbidden place, tried to get my way out. I didn't know the, sh the ship would actually <laughs> shoot me. So we were trying to escape from the ship. We, I had no intention of actually sneaking down to the planet at that point. We were just trying to make a getaway there. Well, the information that I was given by Moraga is he had intruders on his ship. And <clears throat> if I'm being honest rather sizable incentive was given for us to hand over any individuals or information we might come across. Now, <clears throat> I am a lawman, and I am not inclined to take this kind of action. However, you may also be aware that he is Moraga the Hut. Sure. So I well, yeah, tell I, me what should I do, Mr. Jones? What should I do? Oh, on my data pad is the information you need to to apprehend the other people that were being chased on the. See, as I was making my way through the security system, obviously I had to hack my way through, and I noticed that some other people were doing the same, and they used my and I found them in, inside the system, so the information's all there on my data pad. Mm, very interesting. But I assure you I had no like I have no there's no connection between me and those people that were being uh, trying to be apprehended. You can ask f for the description of those uh, people that were being chased and you will find out that does not look anything like me. <laughs> <laughs> The captain very stoically nods and says, All right, I see we're getting more details to this story now. Um, we're going to move you to uh, a more comfortable location because I believe that you will be here for the night. Okay. So he 
kind of motions over the guards, and they come in. And they basically they they don't manhandle you this time. You're you're basically just being led, uh, and they lead you further into the building. And basically, they lead you to this point where there's just this glass square box, and on each of the four sides is a guard facing in at the square box. And the, the captain kind of st stands there and says, "If everything turns out." I will, of course, apologize for the treatment that you've received. I, I do the mime action at the glass door. <laughs> what, what, are you doing? What, what are you doing? I always wanted to do this, I tell him. This isn't helping your case. <laughs> That's, I had to do it. Nice. He true. says, <clears throat> relax for a while. If, if we're able to corroborate your story, there's a chance that you won't have to spend the night. However... I do have my doubts. I tell him spending the night here is not a. It's not a problem as long as you. Have, I I got some good food in the kitchen. I'm all good. <laughs> he says, "Fair enough," and then uh, he slides the door closed, and you see him walking off. <laughs> uh, you notice that uh, he's kind of moving towards a room, and the door swings open, and you see your kind of pile of stuff is on a on a table there. And so you see it kind of just quickly, and then the door closes. And he's in that room. And then we'll do another screen wipe here, and we'll jump back to Sekia and Dex. What are you guys doing now after this? Probably been another further hour since your uh, your party time there in the cabin. Yeah, shit The party's in full swing. <laughs> Might as well screen wipe back in. Let's just want to drink and back. <laughs> We're hammered, and uh, we've got all our shit all over the floor that we bought. And, uh, you know, we've got open booze, and we've, we've opened up some other stuff, party favors. And uh, now we're thinking it's, uh, we're just getting to that point where it's time to go looking for some Twilight Girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Speaking of Twilights, <clears throat> around this time, your ship's comms beep again. Uh, and you hear, oh man, what now? <laughs> just can't, like, can't people just leave us alone? <laughs> Everywhere we go, people are bothering us. You hear this, and then the. Is this the Twilight uh, Girl? Yes, this is, uh, this is the gentleman that you met on Moraga's ship, uh, his Twilight uh, 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 translator guy. Uh, um, oh, uh, Mr. Mr. Twilight. Mr. Mr. Moraga, uh, he's still waiting for the information that you promised, and between you and me, he's not very happy about it. So you could find it in yourselves to send over the data with the information that you had promised. Uh, it would really do well for all of us. And Seki will be like, oh, oh yes, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Oh, Twining, sir. Just, uh, just, just a second here. Just one, just one moment. And I'll hit the hit the mute button. I'll be like, X, X. Where, where's, where's the fucking data? Where's, where's the fucking professor? Harry, he said he uploaded it to the cloud or some sort of data server. Or he said he uploaded it. He said he uploaded it. Okay, yeah. okay. For the sake of this, did, did you say that, Harrison, to the to them? Yeah. At the, when we when we on the com thing, and I mm -hmm. said made, made the laser sounds at that time. Somewhere between a sandwich and a pew pew pew, he said he'd uh, uploaded it. Yeah. So then I'll, I'll take my finger off the mute button. And I'll be like, uh, <coughs> hello, hello, are you still there? Yes, yes. Uh, we are waiting for the data transmission. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's been uh, upload, uploaded to the to the server. Server. Check 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 the server. That's where it is. Yeah, it was uploaded hours ago. Did you, did you check the server? Where else is we, data going to be? It's on the what, fucking server. What server are you speaking of? Our what? server? Your ship server. Yeah. yeah, your ship server. You've already got it. We already sent it to you hours ago. We thought you, you were already doing your shit. Did you catch the guy? What's going um, on? We have no record of incoming communications with data transmission. Well, it's just a data transfer. It's not it a communication. Our tech guy said he uploaded it. Like, you, you heard the conversation over the com link. One moment, please. You were standing right beside me when he said it. And he pauses off the thing. <laughs> what the shit is going on here today, man? Meanwhile, he gets decapacitated. He's really off point. I think he lets his stomach distract him. <laughs> he comes back online. <laughs> He's like, oh, um, yes, um, it appears that uh, 
Yes, the data has been uploaded to our server. Um, from uh, inside the network? From what I'm talking to the over. Um, our, our Apology accepted. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, uh, cool. Did, did, by the way, did you get that stim guy? Did yeah, yeah, you um, catch him or what? Um, excuse me. Um, um, the two big I, bastards. Um, uh, our, 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 our server engineer <laughs> tells us that this was uploaded from within our system. <laughs> yeah. How how is that possible? Do, do, do speak you know to, speak to the tech guy. He knows all. It's that the, stuff the guy that was in the kitchen. He's the one that did it. You hear like a, a silence on the other end of the line. Boss Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're too hammered to like be deceitful. Yeah. We're just like, yeah, it's the guy when he was in the kitchen. He did it on his, with his data pad. <laughs> the guy in the kitchen right with beside me. <laughs> I was, I'm just saying to the Twilight guy, you're standing right beside me, man. We had the conversation. You're right there. Just from um, just in the best. He was in the kitchen. Behind. He uploaded it through the data pad. I said data pad to data pad. That's what I said to Moraga, right? <laughs> You'll just take oh, no, back to chase and shout and stuff. Get the big fellas! Did you find them? Yeah, yeah, and I'll be like, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll like, I'll be like, so erratic in my mind, changing topics in the middle of the conversation. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did you get, did you get stimmed? Did you get stimmed? Um, did you cut his fucking feet um, off, man? Like, unfortunately, no. There was, there was no further contact. Though we did have uh, an incident where someone had es escaped the, the, the lockdown and. I believe lasers were fired and and, and big bastards so, got missing. So you couldn't get the guy in the kitchen and you couldn't get the guy in the cargo bay. Well, what the fuck did you do? And you're you're what busting our balls. You come here busting our balls about this shit, and you guys can't even get your own shit um, sorted out. Perhaps you could say that a little quieter. Um, What's that shit? You keep bothering us, <laughs> Mr. Moraga has already reprimanded several. Of the staff for the incident. And rightly so. Why is not bothering us? We get no drink on. We brought yes. you the information. We brought you the guy. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. told you even where the the dude in the kitchen was that has all the data. We've been nothing yeah, but yeah. helpful, but you keep fucking shit up. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right then. <laughs> and you can tell you got this guy just like totally twisted up. He's gonna really If, if you need the data again, he's in custody right now. He's not in the kitchen anymore. Wait, 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 wait. Have what? you got a what? sister? Have you got a sister? Has he got a sister? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you hear more silence at the other end of the line. Um, we need some Twilight girls. Ask her, he'll know. Any Twilight Girls? Rogers. It doesn't have to be your sister. Any Twilight and Girls. You use your dink and the, the calm gets cut. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he doesn't have any Twilight Girls, or he, so I'll just give I, he does have a sister. Five to suck you. I guess he does have a sister, and I'll high five you. <laughs> Another situation handled like a boss. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice. We'll go back shots. To partying. We need more shots. <laughs> whiskey shots. Screen right. <laughs> you guys go back to partying, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> we'll do another screen wipe here, and, and we're back to Harrison Jones. Uh, and uh, maybe you can describe what you're doing in this room. There is a there is a bed, and basically just four walls with people, four guys staring at you, crying like a pussy. <laughs> Sleeping. Sleeping. All right. <laughs> So you wouldn't notice this, but uh, for scene setting, um, the Twilight guy from Moraga's ship, he walks into frame uh, where he is kind of escorted by these four guards, and he kind of makes a left turn around your uh, cell towards the door where the captain had gone in earlier. And uh, <clears throat> he knocks on the door, the guards open it, and he steps inside with the... Uh, with the captain. About 20 minutes later, <laughs> the two of them come outside the door, and the captain comes, and he unlocks your cell, and he steps inside with the Twi'lek right behind him. He says, hey, wake up. Hi. Wake up. <laughs> I don't know the Twi'lek guy, so... Nice. Hey, who's this? <laughs> and he's like, this esteemed gentleman is a representative of Moraga the Hutt. Mm. Uh, it seems that there was some... 
<laughs> I just asked, did, they, did you find my data? Did you find the data? That's what say, I mean. Yes, yes, we, they, we've, we've both found the data that we've required at the moment. Good, good. Um, it seems that uh, Mr. Moraga is dropping all charges against you. Um, and he's convinced, or his emissary here has convinced us that uh, perhaps your intent was not criminal in nature. Um, I so, <laughs> so we've been requested to release you into his custody. Can I say um, no? <laughs> I guess I, I like. Do I have a choice? Just ask. Do I have a choice? I think you're safer in there, buddy. <laughs> Am I? The prime I just ask do I have a choice? That's all I ask. Yeah, do I have a choice? And he's and the 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 captain kind of seems like taken a little bit back by that question. And he he, he kind of looks at the to be like he looks back at you and says, "Is there a reason not to release you into his custody?" No, I'm just curious. <laughs> He's like, well, then technically, I guess you would have a choice. Okay, I I go with him. Uh, Door number B. <laughs> so Next the, interrogation uh, the starts. Captain, the captain, uh, you know, still a pretty stoic guy, but uh, you know, he's he seems to be a little bit friendlier towards you now. And he says, well, yes, um, your your items have been cataloged, but uh, you know, you're free to take them. Just in this room here, and he gestures over to the room. Yeah. Says, "Though uh, we will hold on to the weapons until you are outside of the building, and one of the guards will return it to you." It's fine. That old thing can't even shoot well anymore. <laughs> and I ask him, and my my friend, he he he's fine, right? He's Although like, he wouldn't call me my friend anymore. But yeah, yeah. He's like he kind of chuckles at that and says, "Yeah, I think friend might be the wrong word that you use there." Um, I still consider him a friend. He bailed me out, man. <laughs> he didn't need to. He was just a good, a good guy. Yeah, it seems that you had other statements about that when you were on the canopy, though. Uh, he seems to have <laughs> generally gotten over that. And uh, all the time, the, the, the Twilight guy's kind of looking to get his, his chance to speak. <laughs> and then, so as you step into the room to grab your items... Uh, he kind of steps up beside the, the table where you're getting your stuff and says, um, the esteemed Moraga requests your presence on his ship. Cool. If you would just follow me. Yep. In his quarters? Or, um, I, I know the way, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had the you choice. The, the, the tweet that kind of raises his eyebrow and says, that kind of information you may want to hold on to a little tighter. <laughs> I thought we are friends here. You just bailed me out. Yes, friends. Perfect. Certainly. And uh, <clears throat> he agreed. We are friends now. You all heard it. <laughs> no, no backsies. I tell him. No backsies. <laughs> nice sarcasm doesn't exist in Arcadia. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they evolved beyond. They don't need it anymore. Nice. So <clears throat> he leads you out of the building, uh, and outside the door, basically the, one of the guards who's with you reaches over, pulls your gun, and sets it back in your hand and says, been discharged for now, but I'm sure you can get the power packs out of there. And uh, <clears throat> the, the Twi'lek uh, standing beside you now, he motions kind of forward, and you see that there's a, a speeder, like a land speeder style one, um, <clears throat> with four... Grimorian guards in the back seat, and there's a middle seat that's open, and then there's a front seat with a driver and another guard. And he kind of motions to you towards the middle and says, uh, again, your presence is most desired by Lord Moraga. Please, take a seat and come with us. Yep. <laughs> All right, so you hop into the... Hop no stranger into the danger here. He's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so you hop into the, this might be a very different conversation from what I had with Moraga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yours went the... to shit. Mine went perfect. You came out with 100k in debt. <laughs> Let's see what I can do with with one in point and cool. <laughs> oh, don't worry. This has my undivided attention. I'm quite looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <clears throat> so then, 
the the speeder takes off <clears throat> towards the, uh, the the ship area, and uh, the Twi'lek guy kind of turns to you and says, um, "Mr. Jones, um, your your crew uh, seems to have provided us with some important information through yourself." Um, mm -hmm. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on the situation that you find yourself in? Um, how, how exactly were you the one captured coming out of Moraga's ship? The captain. I, got, I got greedy. Too hungry. I, just, <laughs> I couldn't resist. He says, P -p pardon me? <laughs> I had the choice left safety to a party, right kitchen. I was hungry, so <laughs> turn, I turned right. Um, I'm sure that Moraga will understand. <laughs> Why security was breached over sandwich. No, no, the security was already breached before that. that that was already before. We were uh, in pursuit of <laughs> of criminals trying to uh, poison or attack that stim guy, the, the tall guy. We ch tried to chase him, so I breached your security for that. I see, I see. Um, I, I don't often give advice, but when, when meeting Moraga, I think you should keep your story simple. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. They don't like that? We helped him. Yes. Helping. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, we helped him. Uh, he he keeps the keeps the uh the guards heading towards the, the ship and uh you start kind of basically passing uh you're gonna pass your ship on the way to his ship. Is there anything you say or do or anything like that in that time? What should I do? I don't have. <laughs> just wave all my guns. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> like with the with the shackles on. Like, oh. <laughs> you're not you're not shackled or anything like that. You're, okay. you're. Yeah, but I I don't make any motion, so it looks shady that I'm trying to get out. Of it. Like, uh, mm -hmm. One final goodbye before I get. <laughs> one final goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> the uh, the the land speeder kind of takes off down the the dock and parks right outside. Um, this all looks familiar to you yeah. in regards to you know the the ramp is still down, the room is still basically set in the same way as it was before, though uh, any tables and stuff like that are all gone. It's still the opulent kind of you know plush carpeted floor that it was before, but um, it's kind of a big open space with a almost like an audience chamber now specifically. Uh, there's a long, you know. Uh, trencher of, of uh, red carpet kind of down the middle where these Gamorian guards are leading you directly towards where you see this massive hut figure reclining on a big bench. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the, the Twi'lek guy kind of steps a few steps ahead of you and turns so that he's facing you and now standing right beside the hut. And uh, <clears throat> Moraga looks at you and he looks at the Twi'lek and he grumbles something in, in hut, hut ease, <clears throat> and he says, uh, Lord Moraga would like to know the reason that this information seems to have come in through <clears throat> <clears throat> our own security system. <clears throat> First I try to ask, can I check if my character is able to speak. Uh, hut language, whatever that is. <coughs> Hutian? Hutties, yeah. And it's very unlikely. There'll be almost no reason for you to do so. <coughs> Should a knowledge check suffice? <laughs> 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 not in this case. I'm not, not going to give you that one. Okay, okay. Yeah, Too bad no we're not bros with him. Okay. You can't just roll a five intelligence to magically speak a language. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought that's a common language somewhere. No, oh, no, no. Literally only the hut speak it. Or like okay, okay. With you. And the yeah. translators. Yeah. But I mean, I traveled Spain at the time. Okay. <laughs> okay, then, yeah, I just tell him, yeah, I, we were being chased by those 
weird brutes and the only way to upload it uh, upload the data was through the shortest way possible so he says I used the USB stick from that in the kitchen <laughs> so again he kind of turns and whispers to Moraga and Moraga Moraga's back out and the Twi'lek says um yes uh, though uh, our records indicate that there was an intrusion in our system from that, and he points over towards the terminal that you used earlier. Mm -hmm. From that terminal, uh, several minutes before information about STEM came. Um, mm -hmm. Could you explain that? Of course. We saw him enter the party and go through the restricted area, so in order to follow him, we decided to access to the door. And, like, and you hear kind of grumble from, from the hut. He didn't wait for the translation this time. He just grumbles directly to the to the toilet and he says, and you thought it best to take, to intrude on the security system rather than speak to the guards. Pretty much, yeah. We have we are confident in our ah. ability. We've dealt with these brutes before. And Moraga kind of rumps forward, <laughs> <coughs> and he kind of like he, he's almost yelling now at this point. And uh, the the Twi'lek kind of looks a little bit scared, and he's like, "The illustrious Moraga wants to know why you thought it would be okay to take over security portions of the ship." that he controls. I saw no choice. We had to follow him since we know how dangerous they are. We saw him fight before. They, those guys are high on drugs. You can see. What did your security accomplish? Did you apprehend those people? <coughs> and you can see the, the glower kind of get bigger on, on Moraga's face <coughs> as he kind of grumbles again to the to the Twi'lek and says, Yes, uh, they were able to get away. Oh, thank Rada God. Fuck me. Not happy. Oh, thank God. It's my it's, only safe. Yeah, he says, and his concern is, is that your intrusion is why they were able to escape. What? No. Because several doors were opened and closed according to our computer records and how do you explain this? We just locked the doors normally after the security system so we couldn't be chased by the brutes and then we opened the doors towards the party so the guards could come and help us. And again without waiting for a translation, <coughs> we're fairly certain at this point that that Moraga understands at the very least what you're saying. Yes. He's, he's responding directly. He like my answers. <clears throat> and he kind of he gets a kind of a low, low, low growl. <clears throat> and then the Twi'lek says, um, Mr. Moraga is not pleased with this situation. I and understand. Asks, what can you do to make up for this breach of trust? Hmm. I could offer some of my services. I guess I'm pretty useful in uh, locking and opening doors. <laughs> oh my god, I couldn't be see. Oh no, oh no! <laughs> Morago's oh no. eyes widen as you lock your poodle. <laughs> and the, the toilet kind of takes like three steps away from Moraga <laughs> and says, Mr. Moraga seems insulted that you would be downplaying his security and... <sighs> Sir, do I have to translate that other part? <laughs> no, I, I think that is pretty universal. But I'm just speaking from a concerned citizen here. I'm by no means a sophisticated computer guy. I'm just an archaeologist 
trying to chase people. If I can get access to your I'm just a boy that met a girl. <laughs> I'm just a boy lost in space. I can get access to the to that to your security system that quickly. I think you need some some assistance here. I heard there's a good engineer out there <laughs> who might be able to help. <laughs> Um, Mr. Moraga is not pleased, and he feels that perhaps, perhaps, and he, he, he kind of like side glances over to, to Moraga and says, it seems the illustrious Moraga is trying to decide whether you will leave this ship or not. Alive. <laughs> I can stay can for you, longer. Can you, can you give him a reason why he should not kill you? No. I provided valuable information to him. I, I had the choice of not trying to help him. You see, but it was in my best intention to secure his party to the best of my ability. And of course, we are already working in the uh, together with him. We are already somehow helping him. <laughs> Not me, but you know, my party. They are already working for him. And uh, you, again, the grumble from Moraga and the Twi'lek says, "Yes." Um, perhaps you could explain that. We've had some conflicting stories about exactly what you are doing here and what your connection is with Mr. Seki Eshiba. Ah, yeah, I, I hired them to help me excavate some stuff down on the planet, but I guess they've been preoccupied with the... Uh, yeah, with some something else here because he wa he seemed quite eager to meet you, Mister High and Mighty uh, King. <laughs> High and Mighty, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I use all the proper forms that I can muster. I don't know them, but nice. To appease him a little bit at least after insulting his insu uh, uh, security system. Uh, Mister Muraga says. Uh, you will have to deliberate on your fate. Uh, you will be uh, requested to stay. To stay. Yeah. Of course. We need to, make to verify some details, and Lord Moraga will have to make some decisions. And yeah, if it's any help, I offer my services. In whatever mm. capacity I can uh, supply. And the, the tweet that kind of whispers and says, "Perhaps you should stop talking now." <laughs> well, I can help we are best buddies soon. And the uh, <clears throat> the the hut kind of kind of does like a double down, and then says something to the tweet that can says, "Yes, uh, these these gentlemen will escort you to your quarters for the for the night." Um, perhaps we will speak more on the morrow. Hmm. Okay, oh, there's, there's a good joke. But I lock the door. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that. I just say that to the guards as we enter the room. Like, but I lock the doors well, boys. You know, you don't want to fuck up again. <laughs> nice. Very nice. <laughs> All right, we'll screen wipe from there, and we'll head back to uh, Sekia, Shibal, and Dex Martin. Um, <clears throat> you guys are well and deep into your party. Can we and, can we uh, say that we found some girls? Sure, why not? Like we went out, <laughs> we, we went out of the ship, and we we met some of the locals. We mingled. Other people are drinking and moving around and stuff too. You know, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. a small place, and and you know people are gonna get bored just waiting for two days, right? So there's some sure people that along the same lines. So. Or mingling. Yeah. So when you guys get back to your ship, um, <clears throat> Drax is the first one that notices as he goes up to the to the cockpit. But there's a there's a message waiting, uh, and he keys in the message, and it's it's the Twilight guy. He says, 
uh, message for the crew of Terra Hunter 4. Lord Moraga requests your presence at 0600 in his stateroom. Please do not be late. Uh, what the hell? That's like that's like a fucking hour from now. Jesus Christ, the sun's coming up already. Lex is like trying to focus on his watch face, but it's got to be getting late. This, since when does a hot crime lord get up early in the morning, first light? Come on, what is this shit? <laughs> nice, uh, and we'll call it there for now. <laughs> wow, what a dangerous evening for Mr. Harrison Jones started with the requirement of a sandwich. Uh, yeah, very expensive sandwich. That I sandwich derailed our whole session. Took this to idea. Yeah. That session just derailed the next two hours of our session. <laughs> we were, we were supposed it. to go on the hunt today. For a I sandwich. Yeah. yeah. The, hand, uh, the hunt for the sandwich. That's the title of this episode, I hope. <laughs> or a hunt for the sandwich. His eyes were bigger than his stomach. <laughs> 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 nice. All right, well, let's uh, let's give out some love to the viewers. Thank you very much for everybody watching. I hope you guys enjoyed yes. the session and uh, see what kind guys. of shit that yes, we got. Thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll Here's see you. Ones. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see you next time and find out. Oh, the mate, stay you gotta tuned. Tune in, you gotta tune in for this one, mate. It's getting epic. If I stay now. live or not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank yeah. you, everyone. Peace, everybody. Right, see you right. next time.